who we have in the house. Let's see, let's see. Okay, okay, keep it coming. So it looks like we have a lot of newbies. So um, you could also just leave your um, your location, your name, and your location, right? Let's let's see where we're joining from. The beauty of these sessions is you get to meet people from all over the world, right? So just leave your location and your name. Olamide from UK, Andrew from Nigeria. Um, thank you very much, Samuel. Tell you from UK. So welcome everybody. And yeah, it's it's my pleasure to have you here, right? Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. So my name is Priscilla, right? And um, I'll be with you from the beginning um, of the session to the end of the session, right? With me in the house is an amazing financial analytics professional and her name is Nene. So if you're joining us for the first time, you're going to be meeting Nene and she'll be taking you through how to build a financial analytics report. You all agree with me that a financial analytics report or a financial report is necessary and important for every business. So Nene is here already. Hi, Nene. Good evening. Hi, Priscilla. Good evening. Good evening, yeah, good evening. everyone. Just give me a so second. You have and yes. sorry, before Nene gets started, Nene, we're going to be building this report using Excel, right? I'm sure every one of us is using Power BI. Okay. Using Power using, BI, yeah. All right, using Power BI, right? I'm sure. Okay, if we're not conversant with Power BI, just um sit back, relax. Nene will be taking you through the process. And I'll be sharing it, the data set we'll be using for this report on the chat box. So thank you very much, everybody. Buddy, welcome. Uh, Nene, you're good to go. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Hi, everyone. I'm 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 loving the excitement. I'm loving the enthusiasm. This is fantastic. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you're joining from. Welcome to today's Financial Analytics Masterclass. It's a pleasure having us. I see we have quite a number of people who are joining us for the very first time. Don't worry. Relax and enjoy it. So today, today's session is going to be a mix of two things, right? It's going to be a, a practical masterclass as well as giving you an introduction to financial analytics. A lot of us have asked, have been saying, okay, what is financial analytics? What is financial analytics? What is financial analytics? Okay, we know finance, we know data analytics. What, what are we talking about, right? So don't worry, keep it cool. We are here for you, right? So I'm going to share my screen now. Please give me a thumbs up or give me um, a, a lovely emoji once you can see my screen. Do let me know when you can see my screen. Give me a lovely emoji. Give me a thumbs up. You know. So online because I'm trying to. Uh, my home. This, no, no, this um, we don't know. We don't know the way Okay, fantastic. So, be, um, fantastic. Thank you very much. You guys are amazing. You guys are lovely. I have two rules, two major rules for my class. Right. I'm going to introduce myself very well now. I have two major rules for my class. One, I love an interactive class. I love you to participate. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to, I love participation, right? So I would love for you to participate as much as possible. I know that I'll be doing some things that you've never heard of before. You've never done before. You're looking at this for the very first time, but I'm going to carry you along, right? I am going to carry you along. So I want you to please participate. That is one. And so as you're trying to participate, I don't want you to interrupt the class. So if you are going to, talk or you want to ask a question please raise up your hand right do not make me mute everybody so if you want to talk you you have please raise up your hand there's a raise hand icon or you can type your question in the chat room my chat room is open my participant list is open i will see everything right um yeah i think those are my two yeah then secondly when i raise when you raise up your hand and i ask you to talk right please we ha you have seven seconds so that we don't delay the class Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So now we are here to talk about this financial analytics of a thing, right? How do we become a certified financial analytics professional? Welcome to Tenalytics Masterclass, right? So for those of us who are joining Tenalytics for the very first time, I'm going to do a very brief introduction of Tenalytics, right? Tenalytics is a cutting edge educational technology firm that is dedicated to increasing the number of Africans or people of the black community in the tech space. We are seeing that Companies are looking for people who know how to use technology, right? Companies are looking for people who know how to use technological tools, right? So as Africans that are coming to triumph in the global space, tech is a fantastic way of entering, the, is, is a fantastic way of you triumphing, right? And also as you're looking at tech, 
if you're interested in if you if you are, you have a particular skill set right you're been in finance for you while or you're interested in finance you don't necessarily have to forget everything you've learned over the past couple of years or everything you've been taught in school or whatever wherever you learned anything related to accounting or finance or i say that you don't have to forget all of these things you can take this knowledge right and infuse it with tech and be an outstanding professional and that is basically what the financial analytics program is about so Ten analytics is dedicated to have to helping africans or people of the black community enter this space right we have a couple we have a couple of programs just like financial analytics however today's masterclass is purely about financial analytics and we have facilitators just like myself who have been doing this for years I think we don't have anybody that has less than five years experience who have who has been using this tool on a day to day, right? So um, these are our co-founders, Adiza, Suleiman, and Ifemena Ipro. They are um and data analytics, data science uh, professionals, experts with over seven, eight, ten years experience, right? And you have my humble self who will be taking this program, right? My name is Nene, and I am a strategic financial planning professional. I have over six years experience using analytical tools to guide companies in strategic and operational decision making. I'm a chartered accountant. I'm a management and leadership advisor with the Harvard Business Review Advisory Council. I'm a senior FPA with Zillus, which is the only authorized licensee of Nike Incorporated in the UK. Prior to Zillus, I worked with Denom Industrial Services in the UK. I worked with KPMG, I worked with Bank of America, I worked with Loros, worked with Leadway, worked with a couple of companies. And I'm here to just talk about my experience, talk about how you can also enter this space, right? We're going to be talk, we're going to have a very, very practical, very, very in, in, in loving, very, very um, interactive session. Remember, sessions that you participate in are the sessions you remember. Now, what we are going to be using today in our masterclass is Power BI, right? So some of us have never heard of it before. And we are going to do a very, very, very simple, very, very basic case study that you will love. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. We are going to be looking at insights, right? Now, before we get into that, let's talk about financial analytics. For me, financial analytics is where data meets finance, right? As a finance professional, you have been taught, you know, debit this, credit this, Basically, what we have been taught all this while, what majority of us know is what we call operational finance. Day-to-day -day accounting, day-to-day -day finance, you are, we are, you are looking at what has happened in the past couple of months, what's going on, you know, things like that. So, sorry, can you hear me? So, Jeremiah says he can't hear me. Please confirm. Yes, me. I hear you. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, Priscilla, please help Jeremiah. It looks like he has audio issues. Okay, thank you very much. You guys are amazing. I love the participation in the chat room. When you participate, it gives me extra energy. So fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. All right. Okay, fantastic. Jeremiah says you can hear now. Fantastic. Okay, as I was trying to say, for me, financial analytics is where data meets finance, right? What we what we normally do as finance professionals, right, is operational finance. Very, very, very few of us have actually tapped into what we call strategic finance. And the truth of the matter, right, is operational finance is becoming automated. We had a LinkedIn live on on Friday evening. I don't know how many of us were, at the, were um joined the LinkedIn live. Did anybody here join the LinkedIn live? Did anybody here join the LinkedIn live? You can just give me a thumbs up or something. Okay, apparently. Okay, fantastic. Or Sita said he did, or she did. The person did so. Fantastic. So, who is this person? So, I'm going to have to mute you. You're not talking to me. Sorry. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So, we're talking about how the role of finance is becoming more and more and more automated, right? Previously, in 10 years ago, the finance team, you, you could have about 10 people in the finance team, where four people were handling payables, three people were handling receivables, and two people were handling treasury, four like that. But now, one person is doing the job of five people. Why? Because the person knows how to use the tools. The person knows how to use the technology, right? That can do the, all these five people's job in a more efficient manner. One, two, faster. So we are seeing that this role, the technology is transforming the way we perform our functions as finance professionals. 
And not only that, but we are very, very instrumental in strategic decision making, right? At the end of the day, companies want to know, management wants to know, directors want to know, board want to know, shareholders want to know if the decision we're about to make, if it makes financial sense. Will we make money? Or what exactly has been motivating or has been influencing our performance over the past couple of years, our financial performance over the past couple of years, so that we can identify that thing? So everybody is muted, right? Everybody is muted. So you have to unmute yourself to talk. So please do not unmute yourself. Thank you very much. So that we, we are together. Yeah, where was I? Please don't unmute yourself. You're, you're distracting. Thank you very much. I was talking about operational decision. Oh, please don't unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um. Sorry, please don't. Can someone remind me where I was? Can someone just remind me? You were talking about um, shareholders, board of directors. They want That's to it. know. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lois. <laughs> so, shareholders, everybody wants to know what, what we're about to do. Based on based on the based on one or two things, does it make financial sense? Is it profitable? Will it give us money? So she can, every other thing revolves around money. Anything a company does in this life revolves around money. And who, who knows how to who knows how to manage money? Who knows how to handle money? Finance professionals. So at the end of the day, with the introduction of technology, with the introduction of tools, finance professionals are very, very important. However, finance professionals who know how to use these tools. We replace those finance professionals who do not use these tools. That is the truth. That is the bitter truth, whether we like it or not, right? So it's not just even um, what the decisions that will help us make money, but also the decisions that we have carried out that have influenced our performance. So we know what is good that we should continue or we should capitalize on, or what is bad that we should avoid. You know, if you don't analyze, if you don't analyze your data, if you don't extract insight, you won't know this. And that is where financial analytics comes into play, right? So we'll be talking about how financial, eventually, right, we'll be talking about how through financial analytics, you're able to understand the current financial position. You're able to get a very, very, very good, solid understanding of the current financial position of a, of a company. You're able to analyze financial statements to be able to provide strategic insights. What does strategic insight mean? Strategic insight means information that you've, uh, you've, you've extracted from data that have analyzed that help influence the decisions a company is about to make. You are being strategic. You are taking steps. You're not just taking any house step. You are taking calculated steps. And how do you make this calculated step? Through this strategic insight, right? Developing sound financial planning and forecasting skills. Yes, don't worry. I'm going to get the recording. Priscilla, please send the attendance link. Um, to get the recording, please make sure you fill the attendance link. This helps us to give you the recording. You're going to get the Excel sheet. You're going to get my Power, my power BI set. You're going to get every single thing. Don't worry. We are here for you. Just sit back, relax, fill the attendance sheet, and listen to me. We are together, right? Develop sound financial planning and forecasting skills. Remember, we're talking about you being able to influence decision making. You being able to say, Mm. This thing we're about to do, does it make financial sense? The cost, does the cost outweigh the benefit or does the benefit outweigh the cost? You've been able to do all of this. You're helping to support financial decision-making strategies, building financial models, building financial models and perform company valuation. These are things that financial analytics is hovering about, right? And like I said, those of us finance professionals who know how to use data analytics tools, right? We replace those of us who do not know how to use financial analytics tools or basically technological tools, right? So financial data be one of the greatest differentiators. Before, data was stored in paper, and that was it was the only reason why we, we stored data was for reference purpose to say, oh, you made a payment three years ago. Can I get the receipts? Now, companies understand that it's not just about keeping it in paper. It's about collecting it, right? And identifying the insights, identifying the trends, right? And you can identify the trends by looking at the data. 
when you have 40,000 rooms, you can't look at it. You have to be able to utilize these tools, right? That help you to extract this insight, extract this data, right? So we say financial data will be one of the major differentiators in the next two to three years. Whoever unlocks this realm of financial data analysis and uses it will strategically win, right? So we are heading to our ambassador class. Are we excited? Are we excited? I need to see. I need to see our enthusiasm. I need to see. Wait, now we'll just cut my head. Let me do what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not hearing no. Are we excited? I need to see. Give me, give me an emoji. Type yes in the chat room. Give me a thumbs up. I need to see. Fanta Esther, you are in the spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you very much, Jeremiah, Tatiana. You guys are amazing. I'm loving your energy. I'm loving every single thing. So, like I said, I'm going to be using Power BI. Majority of us have never used Power BI before, right? Me, I under see. This is what analytics is about. We understand that you, most of us have not done this. So we will take it step by step, step by step, step by step, and we'll show you. However, today's masterclass is going to be very simple. Very, very simple. What are we doing today's masterclass? I have data here. Look at my screen, please. I have data here. Very simple data. I'm going to zoom in. You should you'll be able to see my screen better now. Please let me know when you can see that you can see it very well. Fantastic. Can you see my screen? Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So we have a very simple data. This is from CET manufacturing. CET manufacturing, we work as in the strategic finance units. We are not working in treasury. We are not working in accounting. We have we have gravitated past this. So, um, Priscilla, please can you share this data set in the chat room? There's a link to this data set where everyone can download from, right? Priscilla, please share the link. She's going to share it now, so don't worry. You can go alongside with me. However, if you don't know what to do, someone says I should zoom in very well. Can you see it now? So I'm going to do. I'm going to explain each column. I'm going to talk about it. Don't, don't worry, I got you. So don't do like this. Nene got you. Don't worry, I'm going to explain every single thing you see on my screen, right? So we have the data for TET manufacturing. We work in the strategic finance unit. We have we are not doing. It's not we are not just core accountants doing payables, receivables, payroll. Mm -mm. We are not just doing that. We are helping. We are being strategic. We are strategic finance professionals. We are influencing decision making of our organization. That is where we are. So we are, we are, we are interacting with board. We are interacting with management level. That is where we want to be. Because at the end of the day, they say the goal of every finance professional is CFO, uh, chief financial officer, chief business officer, chief commercial officer, chief uh, um, CEO is chief everything officer, <laughs> right? CEO level, right? And in order for you to get this level, you need to understand the business. So now we have gotten the data of TET manufacturing. Now this business is a business that has that has about five products, right? This business has one, two, three, four, five, six products. They sell air fresheners, they sell carpets, they sell leather bags, they sell pouches. Pouches are those small purses that guys carry some pouches, ladies carry some pouches, right? They sell ring lights and they sell speakers, right? They sell, these are their six products. Right? Don't worry. Don't get distracted. Don't, don't get distracted. Let's just be together. Priscilla, please, what's going on? You have not sent the link. Right? Don't worry if you don't get the data set. Just follow me. Follow me. You are going to get the link at the end of the day. You are going to get the recording. Priscilla has posted the attendance. It is very important. If you don't, if you don't um, mark attendance, you will not get anything. Honestly, at the end of the day, you're not get this recording. You're not going to get my power B. You're not going to get any single thing. So please make sure you feel the attendance. Okay, now back to what we're trying to say. This business, right, sells six products. Now, these six products are, are sold to five countries. Canada, France. They are sold in five countries. Canada, France, Germany, Mexico, and the United States of America. Now, the segmented is that we have channel partners, we have enterprise, we have governments, we have mid market, and we have small businesses within these countries buying our products. So we have the customer segments, we have country, we have product, 
sometimes we give discounts, right? Sometimes we give discounts. So this is a summary of, of sales in 2013 and 2014. The business started towards the end. Sorry, give me a second. Sorry. Yeah, the business started towards the end of 2013, right? Around September. And you want to say, okay, what has happened? Priscilla just sent the attendance on the on the chat room. So please fill the attendance. It is here. Right? This. Please fill the attendance. And let's 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 focus on this class, but fill the attendance. Okay. So they have different, they have discounts. So that is that sometimes they give, they don't give discounts, sometimes they give low discounts, sometimes they give medium discounts. Sometimes they give high discounts. You can see it varies. Now, this is a summary of the products that have been sold to this customer segment across these countries, right? So we have the unit sold, the sales, the total sales from those units, the co cost of goods sold, the profit, right? We have the dates, we have the months, we have the, the num month number, and we have month name, and we have the year, right? We have the year. This, this is 2013 and 2014. Right, so this is our data. Do we understand the data? Give me a thumbs up if you understand the data. Give me a thumbs up if you understand the data. Give me a thumbs up or yes or something in the chat room. I want to know that I can move on. We are we are together. We are together. Fantastic. Oh my people, you are making me happy. Fantastic. You guys are amazing. So now. This is our data. This is our data. Very simple, very straight to the point data, right? So we're going to just identify three or four metrics from this data. We are going to identify three or four metrics from this data, right? We are going to look, we want to understand what has been influencing our sales over this, let's say 16 months that we have been in business. Right, you want to understand the units that were sold from this product total, right? We want to understand the units. This unit, how many air fresheners were sold, right? How many speakers were sold? What product is driving our sales, right? Not, not just want to understand it in total in numbers of units, but we also want to, want to understand it in terms of sales. We want to understand this product mix. What product? Sorry, please don't. I'm going to uh, um, stop everyone from unmuting themselves because you distract me when you unmute yourself. You distract me when you unmute yourself. I don't want to distract the class. Sorry, yes, thank you. I like participation. So you just have to participate in the chat room. You just have to participate in the chat room. Right? I'm pasting the. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so we want to understand the product mix. That means in, in France, right? What are they buying? What is selling more in France? Is it air freshener, speakers, carpets in France, Mexico, United States, France, and the likes. So we want to understand the product mix per country based on the sales value, not sales volume. So sales volume is unit sold. Sales value is this. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to give you the, 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 the metrics that we want to use to create our dashboard. It's very important that when you get a data set, you understand the metrics or the insights that you want to identify from that because it helps you to be able to easily draw, your, draw up your dashboard. It helps you to be able to easy, easily know if you need to do some extra analysis. So like right now, if uh, let's assume that we didn't have profits and based on what we are saying, we need to understand the profits. We have to say sales minus cost of sales, right? Is cost to profit. Right. So do you understand me? So it's good to understand the insights that you want from your data. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Thumbs up. Yes. No. Fantastic. And I, I like participation. This helps me to know that we are all on the same page. Fantastic. So we have identified two insights. Now we said we're going to look at units sold by um for, for each product. What product are we selling the highest numbers? One. So we want to understand the product mix, the sales product mix across the countries. That these six products, 
how have they been sold in these countries based on their sales value? I'm going to show you. We also want to understand what kind of discount are we giving the most in each country? So we want to understand the unit sold, that the, the unit sold and the discount band that is, that is, should I say, reigning supreme in each of the countries that we are in. Hope we understand this. And lastly, we are doing four metrics. Very simple dashboard, very simple financial analytics report that we are doing. Very, very simple. The fourth one is that we want to understand the sales and profit based on each country and segment. Do you get that? So those are the four metrics that we are looking at today. Can I move on? Can I move on? Fantastic. Okay, now I have an empty Power BI report. Now, this is an empty Power BI report. When you open Power BI, Power BI is one of the Power BI is one of the thing of the data analytics tools that we are going to be discussing extensively. So we have a couple of data analytics tools that um, uh, prof finance professionals can not necessarily can, but let me not say can, that finance professionals will be utilizing currently and even in the future. Because like I said, financial data is a, will be a major differentiator in the next two to three years, right? I was talking to someone, I think uh, a month ago, and we're talking about job opportunities. I'm currently in the UK, right? Two, three years ago, you won't see roles in Nigeria where, I'm using Nigeria as an example here, you won't see financial planning roles being advertised. But right now in Nigeria, you can actually see some financial planning roles. In the UK right now, you can see finance data analysis, finance data analyst roles. So it's important. I'm just trying to talk about the re relevance of these data analytics tools. So what one of these is the Power BI, which we are going to be utilizing today. Now, because this is a masterclass, I'm, I'm not going to show you too much of the interface of Power BI. I'm just going to show you exactly what we need for today's masterclass. Don't worry, in the main class, we're going to introduce you to every single thing. We're going to teach you the language of Power BI. So now look at this. When you open your Power BI, what does Power BI say? Add data to your reports. Power BI is a fantastic visualization tool. Power BI helps you to visualize, identify insights easily, easier than Excel. Yes, that's the honest truth. Power BI um, insight um, visualization is so much more easier than Excel. And those of us who have an idea of Excel, by the time we start working with Power BI, you see what I am trying to say. Right. So now, add data to your report. So you can get data from different sources. So you, you, you let's even just go with what's on the screen. Do you want to import data from Excel? Do you want to import da data from SQL Server? Server? Wh wherever I want to import data from websites, from websites, from, from anywhere. But we are looking at Excel Workbook. So I've already saved this to my system. So I'm going to click on Excel workbook and I'm going to open it. Sorry, I don't, <laughs> I'm going to open it on my system. I, I don't want to show my, my folder. Although I can actually show this. So give me a second. So I just, so, and I'm going to click on this, that this is what I want and open. Okay, sorry. So one thing you need to note is when you are doing, when you want to extract data, right? You need to close the data set. And that was what it said. So it said, this is currently open. So I need to close it. So we understand the data. We don't need to come back to this. That's why it's important for you to understand the data that you are looking at, right? So I, I don't need to come back to this. I'm going to close this. Then I'm now going to go back here and say, open. Now look at this, right? It was saying, add data to connect your reports. Now I'm going to click on any, on this, I think it's data, click on this, load. We, are not, we don't need to transform our data. It's already, it's already in a good manner. So we don't do anything to the data. It's just go straight to visualization. So I'm going to say load. Now it's loading. It might take a second. It might take a minute. Don't worry. Just calm down. Now, the moment the Excel file or the file loaded, it, it moves from add data to your report to build visuals with your data. So now that before it was saying add data, 
Now it says build visual with your data. That means your, your, your data has entered into the system. Does this make sense, everybody? Hello, does this make sense? Fantastic. You guys are amazing. I love, I love participation. I love it so much. So please feed me with your participation. I need to know that we are on the same page, right? I need to know we're on the same page. Participation makes me happy. So I'm, my chat room is open, right? If you have questions, please don't hesitate. Reach out. I'm come. I'm trying to arrange the chat room on my screen so I can see everything. Okay, so fantastic. Now see our data here. Data. So we just have very few columns, no, not much data. I don't want to stress you with too many things. Very easy, straight to the point. We know what we are doing today. Know that we are confused. You know, today's a master class. We're taking it easy. We're doing like this, you know. <laughs> so we have our data here. All right now, what do we want to do? We want to prepare a sales performance dashboard for TET manufacturing. So let for me, I like to build my background. All right. So I'm going to click on insert and I'm going to in, um, introduce a shape. I'm going to introduce a rectangle. Don't mind me. I like I like introducing rectangles. You can actually change the color, the background color of your um of your of your page, but I just prefer introducing the rectangle, right? So that I can move up and down. So I introduced rectangle, I did it. Now I want to change, right? I want to change the color. I don't want blue, right? Man, man, fact, when, man, when I see yeah, manufacturer, I don't know why, but I feel like something like a brown, you know, something like that gives me the vibe, right? So I'm going to give it like a light brown because we one thing we need to understand with visualization is you cannot be putting 300 colors, you know? I prefer just stick with one color mix. Your data, your dash, your your charts can have different colors. However, the the overall theme should represent one color mix, one color range. So maybe different shades of brown, different shades of green, or green and white. You know, something mixed like that, the green and black. You know, something like that, so, so that it's not like red, blue, yellow, green. Ah, uh -uh, you're not doing rainbow. It's not already before. So let's use something like this. Right, no border. So something like this. This is our 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 background, right? I'm not going to introduce another shape. I'm going to introduce this. I want to have this as my header. Right. That just because obviously it's a report. Every report needs to have a title. So every report needs to have a header. Right. So I'm going to have it here. Maybe use this a tad bit. Yep, center. Then shape. So we have it's rounded rectangle, right? So fill. I'm going to change this shape. So when you want to um adjust anything in Power BI, you want to change the color. You want to change the font size. You want to change make it bold. You want to change the font color. It's in format. So you move between shape and general. Just take your time. Your first time you are looking at it, you've never seen it before. Just take your time and understand. When you are when you are practicing, just make it okay. What is what does shape say? What is rotation? What is this? What is that? There's no problem. No nobody's. You are not competing with anybody when you are learning. Learn your learn, and you'll be able to improve yourself. You understand? So now, like I said, I'm using different shades of this. I'm can I can use this, right? I'm I'm going to remove my border. So. Once you click on the background, it's going to come up and all you have to do is escape and this shoes. So you can see this looks like a very neat color, color mix. So I just feel like just stick with that one column range, right? So now I'm going to introduce a text box. And in this text box, I'm going to write CET manufacturing sales performance dash board for 2013 slash 2014, right? I'm going to increase this, reduce this, make it bold. I want it, first of all, before I change anything, um, effects, my background color, I don't need background because I'm going to put it on top of here. So I'm going to say background off. Can you see that? I'm going to come back here. Escape. Remember, once you click on this and it 
shows like this. All you have to do is press escape key on your keypad. So I'm going to highlight everything, make it bold, and I want color to be white. I want it white, right? Then I'm going to drag it here. I'm going to drag it here. So I, I want to increase the font size. So increase to, let's say, 24, then adjust it. Adjust it. Remember, there's no, there's no crime. There's no shame. Take your time until you get what you want. Take your time until you get what you want. So TET manufacturing, you can see the center to so escape. Okay, I think we are good. Yeah. No, I want this move down small. I like it center. Don't worry. I'll, don't mind me. I was consulting for a bit while well. I'm very center, center. Must be center. Okay. So this is good, right? Are we good to go? So we know that this our dashboard is sales performance dashboard for 2013 slash 2014. Are we good? Are we together? I need to know that we are together. It's a step by step, very simple dashboard, but I want us to be taking it step by step because I know that majority of us are looking at this for the very first time. However, when you listen in class, when you try to participate, when you try to ask questions, right, you'll be able to understand so that when you are going, when you are going to do recording, you say, oh, Nene did it like this, Nene did it like this. Okay, I can easily do this. Right. <clears throat> Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. I love, I love, I love your participation. So moving on, we said we are going to do four metrics, right? We are going to look at four metrics. We are going to look at, I think the first one we said is we want to look at units sold by, um, units sold per product. So for this, I'm going to take a, um, a star column chart, right? Now, I'm, I said, what did we say? We want what? Unit sold per product. So I'm going to click on unit sold, right? I'm going to click on unit sold. It goes to the y-axis and I'm going to put, I'm going to click by product. Product goes to x-axis. Can you see that? So you can see very easy, very easy. Unit sold products. That's what we want. Now, obviously this doesn't look fine. This does not look fine. So we have to arrange, we have to format, we have to format it. So I'm going to adjust it just a tad bit, nothing too serious, nothing too serious. So something like here. Okay. Now, like I said, we're going to adjust this. So click on this and click on format your visual. Right. So now for X axis, excuse me, I want my color, font color to be black. I want my font color to be black. I want it to be bold. Can you see? Black and bold. I don't need a title. You already know that this is product. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the title and the product at the bottom is going to go off. Now, that is for X axis. Am I happy? I'm happy. If you want to increase it, the, um, the size, change the fonts, you can do anything here. But me, I'm happy. I don't, we don't need to do too much drama. Now, for the Y axis, for what I want to do, I'm going to take it out. I don't want Y axis at all. And I'm going to take out the title. So, so there's no Y axis. I'm going to show you why. Because in the Y axis, it's, it's having, it's coming out here. I don't want it here. I want it on top. I want us to see how many units exactly of air freshener, how many is, although you can cover your mouse around it. However, I want it to show. So I don't need Y axis, right? I'm going to use data label. So I don't need Y axis. I'm going to use data label. Can you see that? So now, the moment I clicked, I turned on data label, the, the labels came up. Can you see that? So you can also come back here, scroll down, click on values, make it bold, make it black, right? Then, that is for data label. Do we have any other thing? You go to general. That was, so that was the visual. That was the we go to general. Now title. We want our title. That's some of units. However, we need to adjust it. I want it bold. I want background with my title, and I want my background to be this color, this color here. Then I want my title to be white. Can you see that? 
Now that we are we are done with type two, I'm going to go to the last place effect, which is showing me one of the things is going to show me is background. Do we want background? I do not want background. No, I want background, but I don't want white background. What do I want? I want remember we're going with different shades here. This place here is this color. Are we together? This place is this color. So that means if we make this this color, it's going to blend. And we don't want it to blend like this because we're not putting borderline. So I'm going to come back here, click this, go to general, come back. Here. I, I just wanted to show you why you don't want this color. I'm going to go to just the one on, underneath it. So immediate. Why not use the legend? So to def initiate, we don't need to do that for this. I'll show you why you need to do that. You can do it if you want, but it's not necessary to waste your time on that. And this, this is just a simple thing, right? So you don't need to waste your time on that. However, if you want to differentiate it, you can do that. Basically, let me show you what he what he said. The columns. If you want to change the colors, the colors of each column, you can come here and change it. But for in, in this situation, we don't need to. It's a very simple thing we are doing. If you, if you want to, when you are doing your own practice, uh, when you get the recording, you can come here, columns, and change the color. Show on and change the color. So, are we good? Do we all understand how we did the first um? metric do we all understand so you can see how easy it is very easy very 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 easy okay now so that's the first metric the second metric is something a, a bit no, most of us know bar charts most of us know column charts you know and the likes right so we're going to use something a bit different now we are going to use the ribbon chart Right now, why do you want to use this chart? Now, please remember when you want to introduce a new chart, make sure you're not clicking on this because if you click on this, when I clicked on this, this is the chart, this stacked column chart is what I use it. If I click on any other thing, this chart will change. So make sure you press escape and know that this is not highlighted, nothing is on. So that when you click a new one, it's not changing your charts, but introducing a new chart. So I'm going to click on this. Now, what do I want to do here? I want to show the product mix based on sales for each country. Let me come again. Product mix based on sales value for each country, right? So I'm going to come here, take this here, drag it. I think this is okay. So what did I say? What did I say I want? What did I say I want? I said I want the, the product mix for each country based on what? Based on sales value. So I'm going to come here. I want product mix. I want product mix based on sales value for each country. Product sales, country, product. Sales, country, product. So it's going to, it to take it for you. That's the beautiful thing about this, right? However, you can, you know that your X, your X axis is your, is your country because you want your country at the base. You want to show the different sales for each country, right? You want your country, your your um, your y-axis is your sales. So it's basically saying that if I remove products, it's basically saying I want to see sales per country. So rather than just seeing sales per country, which is this, I want to see what is the product in this. I want the them. I want Power BI to segment the sales of each country based on the product. So I'm going to say the legend here should be product. Sorry. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you understand what I've done? Hello? Okay, let me come again. Now, first of all, remember the chat is new to you. You do not understand the chat. You do not understand the chart. You do not understand the chart. When I explain the chart, we will do it again. I understand the chart. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Are we together? Are we together? Don't don't get distracted with uh, things. Just say I should come again. Don't don't. Let's not let's not be afraid. Let's not be afraid. Don't worry. Nene got you. Nene got you. You understand this. So now let me come again. You don't understand the chart, or rather, you've not most of in Excel. This chart is not in Excel, right? Or it's not necessary. We, most of us don't use this in Excel. So let me explain. We want. Let me remove this. Do we all understand this chart, which is showing 
the sales for each country. Do we, do we all understand this? Do we all understand this one here? I need to see our comments. Do we all understand? So you, everybody understands the sales per country, right? You on, Everybody understands the sales per country. Now we are saying, is, we are not just necessarily interested in the sales per country. We want to know which product, if we sold 100 million to USA, how many million, how many million was a freshener? How many million was carpet? How many million was leather bag? How many million was pouches? How many million was ring lights? How many million was speaker? Don't worry, Ola De Daisi, I will show you, I will show you. Just listen to me, I'm trying to explain it for you to understand the logic. I'm trying to explain for you to understand the logic. So we are saying that not just do we want to, are we interested to see the, the, the revenue for each country, we want to know who is leading, what is leading what in each country. In America, which of the products is leading? Which is the second? Which is, we have six products. What is first? What is second? What is third? What is fourth? Do you understand? So basically, we want, X, we want Power BI to color code the sales based on our products. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Do you understand that? So we want to understand the. I want. We want. I want Power BI. I'm telling Power BI. Power BI. I have six products. I want to know the the um the top products. Arrange this product for each country. Arrange the products for each country based on their the highest sales value. Based on their sales value, basically. Arrange the product for each country based on their sales value. Exactly the same way we did this year, where we said country, no, for here it was sales units by product. So units, um, products were on the X axis, right? Products were on the X axis and the units on the Y axis. However, I removed the unit sign. You know that this is units. Now, for this, country is on the X axis. Can you see this? X axis. Can we see this? If you're just coming and you're saying you don't understand, it, it is not gelling. It's not gelling. You can't come in and say, I should start over again. It doesn't, it's not flowing. <laughs> Thank you. So you just calm down, listen. I'm repeating things. Just calm down, and listen. So X axis is the country. Do we all understand this? Fantastic. Y axis is the sales. We want to know sales per country. Do we understand the Y axis being sales? The sales per country. Do we understand why axis is being sales? Fantastic. Now I want I want Power BI to do something extra inside this. I want Power BI to color code my sales based on product. So I'm going to carry my product, drag it to legend. Legend is like color, the color codes. I want that's what is called legend. So I'm going to drag it and put it here. Now, let's look at what this is saying. This is saying, this is the total sales in US. This is the total sales in Canada. This is the total sales in France. This is the total sales in Germany. This is the total sales in Mexico. We have air freshener, carpet, leather bag, exactly what we have here, but we have turned it to legend. So it is color-coded. So we have air freshener, carpet, leather bags, pouches, ring lights, and speakers. So now we can see Based on this, that air freshener is the number one selling product in every country. Can we see this? Do you understand? So based on this, you can see, so we have done an extra insight. This is not something that you would have done with your eyes. It's because we understand how to use the tool called Power BI, right? It's because we understand how to use the tool called Power BI. When we say Power BI, color code and arrange the sales of each product for each country we want to see how the sales is fluctuating how it is moving so now we know that from this this is speaker speaker is the next based on this color code speaker is the number two product in usa and canada however it is the number four product in france five products in germany and two products in mexico 
Do you see that? So that means, first of all, from this, air freshener is our major selling product. So that means if anything wants to happen in this life, eh? if anything wants to happen in this life, we should not make a mistake to stop selling air freshener. Do you understand? Don't, don't worry. Um, don't, just give me a second. Let me see if I can just get this. No, let's not get distracted. You're going to get the data set. You, ca you can't start doing the data set now. Okay, Priscilla has sent it, right? Don't get distracted because I'm not going to start a afresh. For any I'm not going to start afresh. You're going to get the recording. You're going to get everything. Don't get distracted. Listen to me. Follow me. Are we together? I need to see thumbs up to know that we are together. I'm still explaining this chat. I'm going to continue explaining it. I need to see thumbs up. I need to see yes. I need to see something. I need to know we are together. Thank you very much. I understand that most of us, this is very new to us. And that's why I am explaining it step by step by step by step. I got you. I got you. Okay, now let's move on. So now, based on this analysis, we, it is very clear that if anything wants to happen in this life, air freshener should not be touched. We can close every other product, but air freshener should not be touched. Because from this air freshener, it looks like air freshener is even like with some of these three. Or two and a half. Two and a half, basically. Air freshener is a big deal. Right? And you can see the size. It's not just showing that it's number one or number. It's the size. It's showing you how big it is. It's, you understand? So, air freshener is a big deal. Now, I'm going to show you an easy way of formatting. So, now, instead of us going to start from the beginning and say, and then be doing each of these steps one by one, all we have to do is click on this. Click on Format Painter. Would you want to think? I love about Excel, Power BI, all these tools. When you hover your mouse around it, it gives you, it tells you what it is. You're not sure what this is supposed to do. It's to tell you what it is. And it not just is, does it tell you, it even tells you the steps. See what's it? Like the formatting of, it, of something in your document. So now, we like this, this formatting. We want to replicate this formatting here, right? Like the formatting of something in your document. Use Format Painter to apply that look to other content. Step one, select the content you like. The, the Select content with formatting you like. That is this. We have selected this. Step two, on the home tab, that is this. Choose format printer. I've clicked format printer. And step three, select something else to apply the formatting. Step three, can you see the format, the, the, the brush? Can you see the brush? Can you see the brush? Can we see the brush? My mouse is now is not more looking like a mouse. It's looking like a brush, and I click on it, and immediately, and immediately, the form the format here is replicated here. So I don't need to start changing background. I don't need to be changing title. It is easy. Can you see how beautiful Power BI is? That's why I say Power BI. The visualization is ah oh, is sweet. It's doing like this. This guy is fantastic. For Power BI visualization is fantastic. However, remember, it's not everything of this that is inside here. So like this legend, there's no legend inside here. So we have to go back to our uh, visual, uh, uh, format visual and edit this. Now, am I okay with my X axis? I'm okay with my X axis. Am I okay with my Y axis? I'm okay with my Y axis, right? Okay, I'm, there's no Y axis there because it's this thing. My legend, am I okay with it? I want to adjust it now. Text. I want my text to be black and I want it to be bold. And I do not need title on. Can you see that? Can you see that our dashboard is gradually taking place? Okay, someone said I should do that again. I'm going to do undo, 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 undo. Are we all together? I'm doing it again. Are we all together? You said I should do it again. I'm doing it again. Um, hey, what's your name? Toby, Toby Lawal. Is you that said I should do it again? So, you said Format Painter. Click on this. Click on Format Painter. Look at my, my arrow. My arrow is, in, in my cursor is showing arrow sign. The moment I click on this, you must click on this first. The moment I click on this, it, now, it takes the shape of this icon here. Click on Format Painter. Can you see? It is no more looking like an arrow. Is now having a brush. It's now showing a brush. Can we also see the brush? Can we also see the brush? Let me drink water. I'm waiting for you. Yes. 
Only two people have seen my brush. Ah, oh God. Fantastic. And you come here and you click your mouse. And it edits fantastically well. Can you see that? So nothing much. So all the extra formatting you have done, you don't need any, you don't need any stress. So however, this one, this legend here was never formatted yet. We didn't have legend here. So you have to go back and format it. So I'm going to click on this, go here, X axis. I'm very good with X axis. Legend, I come to text, I change the color to black, which is this. This is gray, I don't want gray. Black, I make it bold, right? And this is tight too. So I don't need tight too, so I'm going to turn it off and it's looking good. Are we together? Do we like the way our dashboard is coming about? Do we like the way our dashboard is coming about? I can reduce this a bit, increase, not necessarily increase this. Okay, I'm waiting for you to answer. Okay, fantastic. You are answering. You are answering or oh, you, you. Okay, fantastic. Now we are done with this too. We have to come in. I told you we have four metrics. Don't worry, I'm going to take questions at the end. Do you have a question concerning the dashboard or a general question? I'm, I want us to quickly finish the dashboard and I take questions. Is that fine? If it part, you can type in the chat room. Is that fine? I'm taking questions after. So after, after, after. Let's finish the dashboard. As far as we are, if you have a question, just type in the chat room. You want me to redo something, I will redo it. Any other question after the dashboard is ready? Just so that we are all together. I don't want to um, later. Okay, now the next one we are going to do is we want to understand the discount. We want to understand the discount that has been provided to each country. Please, the title thing is optional based on preference. Um, yeah, okay, yes, I don't need the title because you already know that Air Freshener is product. You don't, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a waste of space. You saw that Air Freshener was, was struggling. It was squeezed. It's a waste of space as far as I'm concerned. So that's why. So user, you sent it to me only. You didn't send it to everybody. So nobody knows the question I'm answering. You don't need to send me direct message. Send it to the class. We are all together. Okay, now let's move on. The next chart we want to look at, right? We're still going to go back to this stacked column chart, right? We're going to go back to this stacked column chart. Right, same thing we use here, but we're going to use it in a different light. We're going to use it in a different light. Right, give me a second. We're going to use it in a different light. Same charts that we used here. Remember, this is the same stacked column chart. Same thing, but we're going to use it in a different light. What do we want to do here? What do we want to do here? We want to look at... Sorry. Okay, what do you want to do? You want to look at the sum of units sold by discount band and by country. So we're going to have each country analysis. I'm just telling you how it's going to come out, the end goal. Because I like when you can picture what you're about to do. It helps you to understand it better. If you don't understand it, I'm going to explain it and redo it just like I did here so you understand it. So take it step by step with me. Right now, moving on. So we want to look at units sold by discount band, right? Per country. So, right, we're going to take discount band to X axis. Right? We are going to take um some um, units sold to Y axis. Now, can you see that they look alike? So we can see the height, the this, these are the put then. Um, this is the number of units that got that got um this number of units that got high discount, this number of units that got low medium discount, low discount, and none, right? However, we don't want it just like this. Excuse me. We want it based on country. So now this country, instead of putting it in legend like we did here, eh, we are going to put it in small multiples because. We want it to have small visuals. We want to have one visual for USA, one visual for Canada, one visual for... So I'm going to drag this and take it to small multiples. Can you see that? So now you have Canada, you have France, 
you have Germany, you have Mexico, and you scroll down, you have USA. Are we together? Are we together? Do, do we understand? User, why, why don't you understand what's going on? Type your question in the chat room. So you can see how it's probably makes it easy for you to do one or two things, for you to um, provide extra insight. So I don't, I don't want it to just, let me remove this small multiples. Do we understand this? This is exactly what we did here, what we did here before, right? So do we understand this? Let me do it again. Do we understand this? That we are showing units sold by discount band. Do we understand this? So when I'm redoing it, I need us to give feedback. Yes, no, so I know where to continue from. Thank you very much. Now, we are saying that we, we are not just interested in the discount band in general, because obviously, the pro when you buy high products, Dancast, why, why is your... Um, Dancast, why is your... Why is no... Um, Oluwa Daisy, don't worry. I'm going to answer your question at the end. Don't worry. How do how do you did you make that quandrum? I did not make any quandrum. Power BI made the quandrum by what by instruction. I told you what to do. Now, one thing you need to understand. Let me say this: is each tool has a language. Excel has a language. Power BI has a language. SQL has a language. This English that you and I are speaking. Power BI does not understand English. So you need to know the, the mechanism of Power BI to, to instruct Power BI what to do to give the outcome I want or you want or we want. Do you understand? So here, like I said, we said we wanted the sales categorized arranged based on the products that are leading in each country. Now we are saying we don't want it just as legend. We want it in small multiples. I want to see France. I want to see Canada. I want to see USA. I want to see Germany. I want to see Mexico in small quadrants. And that's why I said small multiples. I'm taking countries to small multiples. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Okay, I'm moving on. Thank you very much. I'm going to drag country here. And immediately I did that. I did not do anything. It's Power BI that day. I just said, carry my, take my country to small multiples. I want it to small multiples. Power BI went to the data and said, what are the countries? I identified the five countries, brought out the data. Can you see that? So you just scroll down and you go to United States of America. Can you see that? So now, remember, we don't need to be stressing ourselves with formatting. I'm going to click here and I'm going to say format painter and I'm going to come here. Can you see that? So when you click on it, it's like a filter. So it will adjust everything to only what you want. So I don't need that. Also. So now you can see Canada. You can see France. You can see Mexico. You can see Germany. Right? You can see United States. However, we're not going to leave it like this. Somebody, Dan Katz, what do you want me to do again? I just did it again. I'm going to do it again for you. This is the last time I'm doing it. So Dan Katz, do you understand this? What exactly do you want me to do again? Is it the formatting or what? What do you want me to do again, Dankat? I'm com I'm calling the name on your on your Zoom. Dankat, what do you want me to do again? Remember, I have a seven seconds. Um, I have a seven seconds rule. If you ask a question, I'm answering you, and you don't respond to me, I will move on. So I don't hold the class. The formatting, okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Dankat. So this is where we were. Dankat, are you with me? And those of us who missed the formatting. We said format painter, like Power BI always guide you, like the formatting of something in your document, use format painter to apply that look to the other content. Number one, select the content you want to, that you want, that you like the formatting, which is this. I select. Sorry. I select. Step two, select this format painter. I select. And step three, the moment I step, I select this format painter, my arrow moves from arrow to a brush. Dan Cat, can you see the brush? Dan Cat, can you see the brush? Can we all see the brush? And step three, click on the 
place that you want to copy the format. So step one is click on the place you like the format. Step two, click on format painter. And step three, click on the place you want the, the, form, the format to be painted on. And this, so it does it for you, right? Now, however, I want each, I want high to have a different color. I want low to have a different color. I want medium to have a different color. Don't worry, look, man, you're going to get the video. Just try to understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, you know that there's something I clicked. Don't worry. When you get the video, you put it, op open it up on your laptop and you'll be able to practice, right? So just understand what I'm saying. No, let's not get distracted with uh, minor things, right? So Canada, France, Germany, Mexico, US. Now, like I said, I want to have a different color for high. I want to have a different color for low. I want to have a different color for medium and I want to have a different color for none. So we're going to go to our format visual x axis we are good with x axis y axis we don't have y axis small multiples which is all this con, 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 con. We, we have it i want tie two we have tie two that is canada france germany mexico right i want it in black and i want it bold do you see that i want it in black and i want it bold did you see that did you see what I did? Look, fantastic. You people are amazing. So that is that. That is for my small multiples. Um, The next is columns. Now, can you see columns? We have the same color. We don't want the same color. Here, we, like I said, there's no ne need to change colors here. There's nothing. By changing colors, there's no insights that's coming from it. Right? As far as I'm concerned, if you want to change, you can change it. Sure. But me... So high, we can give high a deep blue. We can use blue. Give high a deep blue, right? But well, not necessarily that deep blue because the color there is black. Sorry. Uh, okay. Low. No, not after high is... After high is... Um, we can just we can take it like this. We can give any bond any color, right? You can take low, right, which is lighter. I can give medium the middle color, and for none we can give none gray. Just play with your colors. So now you know that high. So now from this you can see that Canada gives, uh, more discounts, more high discounts. Do you see that? While France gives more medium discounts. Can you see? So because of through your technology, through the tool, you're able to extract insights that your eyes will not see on a normal day. Sorry, I'm trying to see. Someone send a question. Okay. Do we understand that? Do we understand what I'm saying? Okay, fantastic. So because of this data, by segmenting it country by country, you're able to extract extra insights. So now you can see Canada gives more high discounts. France gives more medium discounts. Germany gives more, me, gives more medium discounts. Mexico gives more high, the most is high discounts. United States gives the most as high discounts. Can you see that? So you know what is going on in every country. Can we see how the tool is helping us to understand the data. Yes, the recording will be sent, but please make sure you feel the attendance. If you don't feel the attendance, you will not get the recording. That is the way it is because we don't have your data, right? So please ensure you feel the attendance. Priscilla has posted it in the chat room. That's the last thing that is in the chat room right now. Click the attendance, fill the form. I'm going to give everybody 30 seconds. I'm going to pause, fill the attendance form. You'll get the recording, you'll get this Power BI, you're going to get the Excel, you're going to get every single thing I've done today so you can practice. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds or one minute. Right? Wow, I'm, I'm 30 seconds. This is currently um 9 11, 9 10. Once it hits 9 11, I'm going to continue. Please type through the attendance. And if you have filled the attendance, type done already. Type done in the chat room. Let me see plenty done. Done, done, done. I have few few more seconds to 9-11. I'm, I'm going to continue 9-11. I'm giving everyone enough time to fill the attendance. You won't get it. There's no how there's no magic we want to do. You won't get it if you don't fill the attendance. 
So you'll be able to, yes, the, my, this Power BI will be added to the recording. The recording, the Power BI, and the Excel that was used, the data set that was used for this, it, those three things will be sent to you. Very few seconds left for it to turn 11. I'm just waiting for it to turn 11 and I'm done. Once I'm done, I'm going to, we are going to discuss more and I'm going to take your questions. No problem at all. Okay, it is 9-11, I am moving on. So now we have done three of the four insights that we said, right? Thank you very much, everyone. You guys, you are fantastic. You are the best participants in the world. Okay, the last chapter we are going to be looking at, remember, make sure you are not on a particular chart. If you click on a particular chart and you change the chart, it, and you click on a different chart here, it will change. So please ensure that before you click anything, you press escape. Aha. So now, the last that we want to do is look at sales and profits for each country and segment. Sales and profits for each country and segment. Do you understand? So let me, let's, let's do this. So we, we are going to use a clustered column chart. Right? Is this sales? I think I'm just, I will actually just do sales. I'm thinking about it now that we profit enter. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I told you I like arrangements. I'm coming, I'm checking. Okay, thank you in the chat room. So, what do we say we want? We want sales. Um, per country per segment, right? Sales per country per segment. Do you get that? So sales goes to Y axis. Country goes to X axis, right? Which is like what we had here before. No, the, but this one was unit sold, yeah. But so sales per country per segment. Do we understand this? Basically, this is just sales per country. They have not done anything. Nafisat, you say you don't understand. I just put sales per country. Do you understand that? I've not yet put the segment. I'm taking it step by step. I've not yet put the segment. Um, Latif, if I put the segment, you say you don't understand. So I'm doing it step by step so that we are all together. But why is sales, why not sales in X axis? Sales in, you don't put the numbers in X axis. This is Y axis. If I put numbers here, United States of America, Canada can be here. Do you understand? No, um, no, sales numbers are always here. The, 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 the main data points are here, then the numbers on the left side. So now we don't just want it like this, right? Um, we now want it, want it as, this is a cluster chart. So I want to know in each country, Right, what are the what are the, it's just like this, but I'm presenting a different light. So it's some of sales by country and products, but this one is some of sales by country and segments and segments. So instead of me using a, a ribbon chart, I'm using a cluster chart, exactly the same thing, but the outcome, the look, the end goal is different, is exactly the same thing, but the end goal is different. So I'm going to carry segments. What is segment? I'm going to carry segment to legend, just like we did here. Would carry to legend. So can you see that? So now for United States of America, I can see that small business segment is what is pushing in United States of America. However, in Canada, government is our major is our major client in Canada. In France, government is our major client in France. In Germany, government in Mexico government, right? Basically, government and small businesses are our major clients. Can you see how by just using this tool, excuse me, it has come out, which is something that if you're using your eye to look at, you'll never, you'll never get it. So let's take, let's take this and format painter. I've already explained this format painter like three times. So I'm not going to explain it again. Click on format painter and paint this. Right? Then remove this sum of sales by the side. Right, X and um, Y axis. We don't want Y axis. We don't want type two. So can we see? 
Can we see this? No, you can already see. You, so you, if you are working in a business, like now, let me explain something. If you are working, this is, you, you are inside, you are internal people. You already know that this is a segment. You are not, you are not, you are working in an organization. If you are working with Coca-Cola, you, do you need to say, if you are working in Coca-Cola, Nigeria, do you need to say states, Lagos State and Ogun State and the River State and Oyo State? Everybody you see Lagos, Ogun, Oyo, everybody knows there is a state. It does that that state, Latif, do you understand? Everybody knows that that state. If you are talking about business units, you are talking, you are talking about uh, Coca-Cola, you are talking about, you don't need to put products because obviously everybody in the business knows that that's products. Do you, do you get me? Okay, fantastic. So we are, can you see our, 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 our dashboard, our report? Is it making sense? Is our report making sense? I need to know. Are we together? Is our report making sense? Is it making sense? Is it making sense? Is it making sense? Hey, is it making sense? Is it making sense? Mm, 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 mm. Fantastic. I actually said over sense. <laughs> Fantastic. But we need to do two more things. One at one thing, but twice. Right? You can rename for you can rename United States to USA. If you want, there's no problem, but you rename it in the data set at the beginning, not now. Right. Um, so yeah, back to this. We are, we have done with our dashboard. However, we're we going to introduce slicers. Slicers are filters for dashboards. So if you want to say, I want to know what's happening in 2013 alone. I want to know what's happening in 2014 alone. I want to know what happened in January 2013, sorry, January 2014 alone. How do we do that? So we are going to utilize slicers for that. And that's why we kept space up here. So we're going to see, this is what we call slicer. So make sure you're not clicking on anything that nothing is highlighted here and click slicer. Now slicer will come up, you can drag it here. Now, what do I, what did I say we want here in this slicer? We want the first thing we're going to take is here. Now, can you see this is like, but this is not the format I want at all. So I'm going to click on format your visual, slicer settings. This shows between, I don't want between. I want tile. It shows 2013, 2014. Tile, right? That is that. Then slicer header. I want header, fantastic. I want my header to be white. I want my header to be bold. And I want my header to have a background color of this brown. Can you see that? Can you see that? Then that's my slicer header. My values, I want it to be white. I want my values to be white. And I want them to have background of not this color. Because remember, if it's this color, it will blend. It can either be this color or let me give you something in between. No, nah, I don't want that color. If, if I do that color, it has to be black. Let me give it black. The values have to be black and bold. Yeah. Right? And so that's values. Then general, um, general effects, I want no back. Okay, I want background, but I want that light background. Okay, not light back. I want the next one. That is this, right? I want this. So everything is the same. It's just like everything has been. We're building this. So I'm going to go back here. This is my values. I, I think this is too light. It's too close to this. So I'm going to change it and maybe give it this, right? And give the, and give this as white, something like this. Are we together? Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Fantastic. So as we have done this, so basically what I've done, what I've done it like this is escape. If I click 2014, our data immediately changes to only 2014 data. It filters and removes 2013. And you can see it is highlighted black when it changes, right? If I click 2013, it changes. Just that. And if I want to remove 2014, I click it again. 
Can you see how interesting it is? My people, can you see how interesting it is? Fantastic. Now, I'm going to introduce another slicer. I remember, if you want to do this, escape, remove your hand there. I'm going to introduce another slicer here. And I'm going to have this as month, month, month number. And I don't even have to start editing and re-editing again. All I have to do is to click on this, format painter and paste. Okay, I need. I think I have to do the formatting again for this one. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. It's actually supposed to do, but it doesn't matter. All you have to do is to come here, right? Slicer settings. I want tile exactly what you did. Okay, as I change it, the minute I change it to tile, everything adjusted. So, because I want to say it should have adjusted, like filtering based on exactly. Oh, Ugo Chuku, you said a bomb. <laughs> so now, if I say I want twenty fourteen. And I want match. It filters it out for me. So that means in March of 2014, we sold more of pouches. We sold more pouches than air fresheners. <laughs> you said, Mama, you don't they do magic. No, I'm not doing magic. That's the beautiful thing. This is. Power BI in action. Can you see how Power BI makes your data interactive? Imagine you giving a meeting, a, a giving this presentation to your your director. Just imagine you are your 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 managers and your board of directors are sitting and they are talking about okay, what's the sales performance for 20, 30, 20, 20. I am building like you present this. I are talking about this. You are removing okay. Say oh. This is this is what, what has happened throughout 2013 and 2014, right? However, if you know that when you're making those kind of presentations, that's why you're not start putting for there. Start putting, however, in 2014, we, we have it like this. Then if we want to go deeper, you know, we want to go deeper, that's why you're not start using for there. We want to go deeper and say, okay, what happened in May, in May 2014? All right. You know, so in May 2014, we sold majority of air fresheners, right? We sold majority of air fresheners. And we sold this to um across small businesses and governments. You know, that's why you're not supposed to speak this on phone. Eh? So are we together? Remember to remove the filter, just click on it again. Are we together? Are we together? My people, nobody's answering me. Hey. <laughs> so imagine this we I think we spent about an hour 15 minutes because we didn't start immediately on the dot. So about an hour 15 minutes, and we're going through this step by step. We're doing it some some of the charts. We did that, we did it repeatedly, 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 so we could understand. Just imagine what you would do in three months when you've actually learned the language of Power BI. So don't worry, you're going to get the recordings, you're going to get the, ex the Excel data set, you're also going to get the um the Power BI, which I just did for you to work. Yes, Power BI is, is easy as a better visualization tool than Excel. However, nothing beats Excel. Excel has, done, it has its own games. Right, so now, let's talk more. Let's talk more about... um. Let's talk more about financial analytics. Let's talk more about financial analytics. Now we've just we've just had a hint, a tint, a a a a, a vision, a smell of the vision of financial analytics. Let me let me start speaking with Fonet. <laughs> right. So basically, this course is designed for beginners, just like some of us who have never ever ever. I'm going to take your questions very soon. Right. Who have never ever ever used Power BI, but we understand the interactions, we understand the interface that got us to this end goal. Right? Right? Um, yeah, so the, the way we have tailored financial analytics is for beginners. So it's for beginners who have experience. You have experience with Microsoft Excel, fantastic. You have experience with Power BI, fantastic. You have experience with SQL, fantastic. Yeah, don't worry. You say you have experience, we, have, we got you. You say you don't have experience, we got you. One thing we have seen is that when we have ex when we think we understand Excel, Excuse me. We think we understand Excel. At the end of the way, you come for Excel class, you'll be like, ah. Hmm. Then let me tell you the truth, though. I thought I was a seven. 
but I'm actually a play. I've had plenty of it in class. So we don't say, oh, you have experience. We are going to we are going to just no, we're going to still start from the beginning. We're going to make it interesting, such that you are not you are not lost or you are not bored, but you are engaged, right? So we 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 do what we call experiential learning. Don't worry, Jeremy, I'm going to answer your questions very soon on that. We do what we call experiential learning. We do what we call experiential learning where you are learning and practicing at the same time. Unlike today, where majority of us were just watching me, you are going to have downloaded the data set ahead of time to class. You are going to have gotten your software ahead of time, ahead of class, ahead of class, ahead of class. It's not in class that you'll be downloading. You are going to have given you every single thing you need ahead of the class. Now, let's talk about the financial analytics curriculum. First of all, we start with problem solving. Why do we start with problem solving? We start with problem solving because as strategic financial analytics professionals, as strategic finance professionals, we are problem solvers. Remember, like I said at the beginning, our goal is to be influential, relevant in decision making. And decision making, majority of decision is to solve problems. We want to grow. Growth is a problem. How do we grow? What are the things we need to do in order to grow our revenue, in order to grow our profit, in order to reduce our cost? This is where finance professionals come in. So we need to understand the problem-solving tools, the problem-solving techniques that we can engage in, that we can utilize in our day-to-day -day activities as professionals, even in our lives, right? Then after problem-solving, we go into Microsoft Excel. We teach you the language of Microsoft Excel. How do you utilize, how do you craft formulas? How do you identify insights? How do you, as finance professional, Excel is one of the most useful tools. What we have done today, we are, you can actually use in Excel. I just wanted you to do something a bit different from what you, from your, your, from your regular, right? That's why we use Power BI, right? Excel is a very, very important tool. You might not use the other tools in your current organization. You might use the other tools in your future organization. But Excel, every organization uses Excel. Everybody uses Excel. So, and I tell people this, Excel is the easiest way for you to shine. People think they know Excel. When you cannot use Excel better than them, you'll be a star. I, 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 on Friday, I spoke about how, I spoke about how Count If made me a star in my previous organization just by the use of counts, because people don't understand the language of Excel. They want to do this, but this is how it is in their mind, but they don't know how to tell Excel to get the output for them. An ordinary county got the output for me that I need my former director, right? Then we go into Power BI. What we have done today in one hour, 15 minutes, right? We have not entered the intricacies of Power BI. What's the language? What's the this? What's the that? What, what, what can I use for this? What do I want to transform my data? I want to do some extra insights, extra analysis. What do I do? I'm going to teach you the language of Power BI, right? We're also going to, after Power we're going to go into SQL. Remember, like I said, the job description of finance professionals are changing. The job description of finance professionals now is different from job description five years ago. Am I right? Job descriptions are changing. So, the before people are looking for finance, when you say financial analyst, financial analyst must know how to do that debit and credit alone. Now, the one financial analyst that can prepare financial model, the one financial analyst that can prepare dashboards, the one financial analyst that knows how to use Power BI, the one financial analyst that can build some queries, that can query data. Yes. So we are preparing you for the future of work, even for the present work um, demand and the future of work, right? So SQL, structure query language, we've added that into it. I think we added this like two class, two cohorts ago, right? We've added SQL to the financial analytics program so that you have the full data analytics experience and finance incorporated into it. We also teach you how to leverage ChatGPT as a financial analyst. My goodness, it is not about us fighting with technology. It is not about us fighting with artificial intelligence. It's about us leveraging technology, leveraging artificial intelligence to make our work easier, All right? So we're going to talk about it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to discuss, we're going to teach you how to leverage ChatGPT in your day-to-day -day as a financial analyst. Now, 
Well, also after this core data analytics element, we're going to go into finance proper. Remember, the goal is going to be a strategic finance professional. Now, apart from understanding the data analytics tools, you need to also know how to influence decision making. And by influencing decision, decision making is always futuristic. We want to do this in the next five, um, over the next five years. Will it make us money? How can you create a financial model? How can you create a financial forecast? A financial forecast that incorporates the business model. The business model is how a business intends to make money. Operating model, how a business intends to operate in order for it to make money, right? And funny thing is, these financial models, these financial models that we're talking about, they are used by big organizations, small organizations, medium-sized organizations. We spoke about it on in our, in our live, right? We spoke about, I have, I have built financial models for big banks in Nigeria, when I was in Nigeria, right? And this is like financial model we started from scratch. Why did we start from scratch, even though it's an existing bank? We started from scratch because the decision making they want to do, they're talking about these are the things we want to do in the next five years. What does it mean for us? This is the part we want to stop doing this, we want to focus on this area, we want to focus on this industry, we want to do this. What does it mean in financial terms for us as a business? Right? Then small businesses they, they want to start. Does this does this business idea does it make sense? Does it make sense? Does it make sense for us to venture into it? Is it financially viable? Is it sustainable? Is it a business that we can we can get funding? Things like that. So you can see it's very important. So what we do, we first of all start with accounting fundamentals, right? So this program is for those of us in the finance space or those of us interested in finance space. So we first of all start with accounting fundamentals. We is like a refresher course, right? Those of us who you have said, oh, I've done, I've done, I can, I've done, you see, I've done. Don't worry, I've not done it. Don't worry. But you're interested. One thing I need to caveat, put a caveat is you must be interested in accounting and finance to take the financial analytics course, right? You must be interested to put in the effort because they're going to give you everything you need, right? Accounts fundamentals. They will talk about financial modeling. I, I, I spoke about that, how you create the financial model. Don't talk about financial analysis. How do you do create common size financial statements? Be able to analyze, be able to ex get extra financial insights. What does it mean? Okay, what's, what's the trend over the next five years? What is shaping it? What is what is influencing it? Can we reduce this? If we reduce this, will it, what, how will it affect our profit? If we increase this, how will it affect our profit? Will it give us higher margins? All those kind of things, right? We also teach business valuation. Companies want to know the value because everybody's looking for funding. Everybody's looking for whether these projects that we're about to do, what's, what's, what's it going to metamorphose into? If we do a project for five years, can we sell it and make more money? Or can we add it to our balance sheet at a particular value? Can we get, what, what's the value? Can we, can, so we talk about the different valuation techniques. And we also teach you the different valuation techniques. We teach you intrinsic valuation. We teach, we teach you um, um, comparative valuation. We teach you all of that, right? They also talk about sensitivity analysis, right? Scenario, scenario analysis, right? But we also talk about that. So that is the financial analytics curriculum. Now, like I said earlier, we believe in practicality. So throughout your program, you are going to be working on case studies. You are going to be working on projects. You are going to have assignments. It's an immersive program because it's, it's three months live classes, then one month growth intention. I'm going to talk about the growth intention very soon. Three months live classes. We have, like I said, we, we we are dedicated. You have facilitators who are doing this on their day to day, but they are interested in having more people come into the work. I'm doing African in my organization, in my, in my team. Let me not say, in my I've not seen another African in my organization, but we are large. So in my team, I'm doing African. In fact, sometimes I, I, you know, you don't remember that you're doing African until you have things that you have to travel. That's when I remember that you have to apply for visa, right? But, and they don't understand the concept of visa. So you don't have to start explaining the concept of visa. But at least if there's another person that is explaining the concept of visa also, it's okay, oh, there's, a, there's something called visa. This guy don't understand visa. That's the honest truth. So, um, yeah. So this is the financial analytics curriculum, <laughs> right? And we're, you're going to get this. You're going to get the recording. You're going to get the Power BI. You're going to get the Excel. And you're going to get this brochure, right? Um, so, yeah. So now, are you interested in building the skills for today and for the future? Are you interested in being the go-to finance professional in your organization? Are you interested in promotion? 
excuse me, I'm interested in a new job, then the financial analytics program is for you. I remember like three cohorts ago, we had someone who was a financial controller, right? He was a financial controller, and in the course of the program, as he was learning, he was in, he was imbibing it in the organization, was practicing it in the organization. At the end of the program, he told me that he got promotion to CFO. So when when he when he sent a message and said he got promotion to CFO, I was like, oh, fantastic! Congratulations. He now came to give feedback in the master class. Like we have some people who are giving feedback, and he mentioned that the CFO role did not exist, but based on the way he was identifying strategic insights, they needed him to focus on more strategic things. So they created the CFO role for him to get that promotion and they hired a financial controller so that he can focus on that strategy. So the promotion came not because the role existed, but because he upskilled himself. So you can see how all these things are necessary. Right, all these things you you don't know you don't know where your next your next job will be. You don't see. It's not when you apply for job, right? That you or you get to interview. You not can you not ask you for some certain things. Ask you for some tools. Ask for some practical sessions. And that's when like ah, I don't know this thing. You not be trying to manage yourself. There are some things if you do not use power bear, you do not use power bear. If there are some things if you have never created a financial model, there's no how you want to do woo to the answer. Not non Nigerians. We rule to dance as you are trying to, you are trying to um scheme your way out of things, right? So that is that. So now financial analytics program is for you. Now, so like I said, it is 100 percent online, just like we have here today, because we have facilitators from different parts of the world take that are going to be taking you. You have facilitators in Nigeria, facilitators in the UK, you have facilitators literally everywhere in Ireland. We have, we have different facilitators, analysis as facilitators. All over because we have working professionals who do this on their day to day, right? We have hands on practical sessions with videos, exercises, and projects, right? We have what we call watch me do it videos. Now, for the financial analytics um, class, we have live classes only on Saturdays. Now, why do we have live classes only on Saturdays? We have live classes only on Saturdays because we understand you're working Monday to Friday, <laughs> we don't want to choke you. You understand, but we want a situation where you have you you can sort of flex your learning. You have live classes, interact with your facilitators live, right? On Saturdays, three hours on Saturdays, and on Sundays we have what we call guiding videos. We call it "Watch Me Do It" videos. These are videos where you watch the instructor, follow you follow the instructor. No no distraction of somebody asking question in class. Mm -mm. You can fast forward, you can rewind, you can pause at your pace. The only thing is, the only thing is you must watch the video and practice and do the assignment before class on Saturday. That is the only room. Now you have lifetime access to materials. We have a classroom, an online classroom. Once you pay and you get access to the classroom, it's, it's for life. All materials, all tools, all every class is recorded. It is a it is a taboo for you not to, for you not to have a recording for an analytics class. Every class is recorded. So the recording, the material, the assignment, the facilitator slides, the facilitator, everything, you have it in your classroom and it is for life. You have lifetime access to materials and professionals, right? Um, we are talking about, I'm going to talk about this financial compensation more later. So we're talking about how adding projects to your portfolio because at the end of the day, when you're looking for a job, <laughs> it is not I have I have lens that will get you the job, <laughs> you know. It is I have done and I can do. So you need to be able to showcase. And that's why we are focused on experiential learning. You be, you practicing, you doing stuff. So that when you are in, invited for an interview, when you are invited, when you want to reach your CV, you have things to talk about, right? We're going to talk about CV and all of that very soon, which is under the 100% job prospect visibility. We help you repackage you to be that professional that wants, that can be hired. Because most of us, at the end of the day, we look at ourselves. <laughs> Say, can I hire myself? Ah, can I hire myself? <laughs> right? So we also provide an industry relevant certification, which is the certified financial analytics professional. So at the end of the day, you get a certificate called the certified analytics professional after doing your capstone project, which is a presentation. You do you work on your capstone project and you present it. Excuse me. 
and you present it, you get your, your certificate, right? This is a three months, actually three months training program, not three months. It was two months, but not three months, right? Three months training program and one month virtual internship. I'm going to talk about the internship very soon. So now talking about average salary, the goal is for us to enter the global tech space. Excuse me. Sorry, <laughs> I've been talking. Okay, the goal is for us to enter the global tech space, right? Even with our finance profession, we can enter the global tech space. We can enter the global space. You know, when, and when, I, when we say tech, tech is not just about the industry. What I did today, I used technology, right? And every organization is looking for people that understand how to use technology. So you can work in manufacturing, you can work in logistics, you can work in banking, you can work in uh, social media, you can work wherever. I'm, I'm currently working in sports manufacturing, Mikey, in my finance knowledge. Do you understand? So talk about, you can check this on Glassdoor. Now, obviously, it, it changes every time based on the data that is updated. But at the time I took this, this was the screenshot. But it won't be too far, far from this, right? So this is UK, this is Canada, this is US. Right? These are the three major countries that most people want to go to, right? So now, in addition to learning these financial analytics tools, we, you also get to join a series of specially designed recruitment hack sessions. Now, these recruitment hack sessions, <laughs> thank you very much, Steven. These recruitment hack sessions are in the one hour in the week, one or maybe on Thursday, Friday, you know, just in the middle of the evening, just chill, relax, watch this session, get, it's more, it's like an interactive session, which is, tailored to help you rebrand yourself, right? The first is CV review sessions. One thing you should know is if you're using one CV to apply for 10 jobs, you are wrong. Even if this job, the 10 jobs have the same title, you are wrong. Because what one recruiter is looking for is different from what the other recruiter is looking for, even though the job titles are the same. Check it, you see minor differences in the job description. So we teach you how to get how to revamp your CV. We're not saying, don't say, give me your CV and let me do it for you. No, because after you finish the class or when you're applying for jobs, you can't, you don't want to be going to use apply for 10 jobs, right? No, you you are going to revamp your CV based on each job you are applying to. We're going to teach you, we're going to tell you as real as it is. We're not going to bobo you. We're going to give you the real deal and help you, guide you to get that job. Our goal is for you to enter that space. Our goal is for you to get those jobs. It's at the end of the day, it's not me that will get the job. I already have my job. <laughs> it's not me that's going to get the job. It's you that's going to get the job. It's you that's going to get the promotion. It's you that's going to get the salary increment. You just come and give testimony to analysts and say, ah, the analytics, so God has done it too. We have gotten job. Bro. I've gotten two jobs. I've gotten three jobs. Hey, in the space of two months, I got three offers. Hey, the analytics. Yeah, at the end of your name, it's not me. You know, it's not that I, we're not going to collect the salary on your behalf. It's you that collect the salary, right? So CV review, we have review sessions. <laughs> then we also have LinkedIn optimization sessions. Why do we have LinkedIn optimization sessions? Because the, the world is a global village. You can have recruiters look in Poland looking for you. You can have recruiters in Ireland looking for you and you're in Africa, you're in South Africa, right? You're in Rwanda. And that because you have the skill set, you have showcased that you have the skill set that they want, to head on to you. They'll send you a DM, they'll send you an email. I say, please, we would like to have your CV. We would like to have a chat with you. We have this position available. How do you rebrand your CV, your LinkedIn profile to ensure that recruiters look for you? We're going to be discussing that, right? Recommendation letters. Most times, we people, companies want people that want other people to vouch for their candidates. I will say, oh my God. Relax, do like this. Tenalytics got you. You are participant to Tenalytics. You need you. You've gotten a job offer, or you need, or you are looking for something. I need reference in time. Recommendation is that we got you. We will vouch for you. Yes, because we've trained you. You've worked with us. You have done your project. You've done your assignment. We will vouch for you. And whoever we are vouch for, I've not seen anybody that they rejected that voucher. Nah, it's not possible because we say what we mean and we mean what we say. We are not new to this. We have been doing this. We've helped over. We've trained over 50,000 participants across the world, right? So we know what we're doing. We also have weekly mentorship sessions and career pro or slash career progression sessions. Now, these are sessions whereby we come as we are. 
Don't worry, look at you. I see where I'm getting, so I'm getting there. Calm down, calm down, calm down. I got you. I got you. We also provide weekly mentorship and um, career progression sessions. We, this happens every Thursday evening. Where you come and ask questions. We give you guiding, like you said, career progression, mentorship sessions. We guide you. We guide you. So this for interviews, this is how you handle it. This is how you package yourself. This is how you show your, showcase yourself. You ask questions. You say, ah, this is what I'm facing. How do I... Out there, because sometimes you just need someone to talk to. This is a new phase that you're trying to transit to. How do you talk? How do you? How do you? How do I? How do, how do you share the questions that you have in your chest? So this session is there for you. We got you, right? Like I said, we are not new to this. We know what we are doing. We are always looking for ways to improve our value offerings. We are not new to this. We know what we are doing. Also, we talk about how to navigate the job market to get sponsored jobs. You are in the UK. You are in the US. You are in Australia, we get people who have gotten these jobs and we, we tell them to come and teach you the ins and the outs. How did they get these jobs? How did they get these sponsored jobs? How did they get good paying jobs? How did they get jobs that can climb career ladder? You're not doing, you're not just doing the uh, uh, care and uh, support and all the uh, warehouse or all the jobs that they would, uh, we have Nigerians doing or uh, Africans doing abroad, right? We talk about how can you get jobs that you can climb career ladder in the next five years, where will you be? Where will you be in the next five years? Those kind of things. So we help you. We get people that come. They come and teach you the secrets, the mistakes they learned, they 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 in, they went through. These are, you know, they say experience is a good teacher, but let the experience of others teach you. That is what this number five is talking about. <laughs> All right. Then we say through the program, we say we are doing CV revamp, we are doing LinkedIn revamp, we are doing all these things. Apply for job. Apply for job. We have posted the, the, the attendance link like five times. I'm, I'm sending it again. Please fill the attendance link. Now back to this. We, we say apply for job, apply for job, apply for job. However, when you apply for job, we, we don't want you to just go like that. No. Remember I said, even though our name is not, when you get the job, it's not our account that we pay salary to, but we are interested, we are vested in you getting that job. Because that's, the, the whole goal of Tenalytics is to have more Africans in this space. So when you get a job, it's an addition to us. We have one more on the list of successful. One more on the list of successful. So say when you get a job interview, reach out to us. Don't, don't reach out to us at the last minute though. But which, then you get the interview in, invitation, send a message. We have a, we have a, a slot where you can um, book interview preparation sessions. Click on interview schedule an interview preparation session with one of our facilitators right and we, we prepare you position you for this interview so that you can get the job right now uh olukayo day this is where you're looking at now um in what we've spoken about now is you can get remote job like my work is 90 percent remote i go to work once a week or go to work once a week or once in two weeks literally that's my work so i'm almost i'm almost remote right um however we, we have people that say see nene see it's analytics i'm interested in jackpot but i'm not interested in jackpot for those of us who know jackpot is moving out of africa moving out of your home country and going to go and shine in another country in a developed country right but i'm not necessarily interested in leaving my home country i'm not interested in leaving uganda i'm not interested in leaving nigeria i'm not interested in leaving ghana right i'm not really interested but i want to end this foreign exchange you know they said the goal is to end foreign exchange and let and spend local currency and that is the main the main goal you know so we said we got you we got you we got you so we have freelance optimization sessions we have freelancer optimization session where you work as a freelancer um, we've had people that have gotten, um, they'll get financial model jobs. And the beautiful thing about this financial analytics program is that you can get jobs as data analysts. You can get jobs as financial analysts on the freelance options. So you, you literally, I tell people financial analysts, you have the best of both worlds. You learn data analysis, you learn finance. It's people get budget, they'll still create a budget. You have this, that, and it's your time zone. You create a time, you and your, and the freelance person, you agree on a time for a meeting. It's not like nine to five that you do the clocking. Did you do that? When did you resume work? When did you close? So this is one of our value added services that you get, right? Um. So this is our roadmap. Like I said, problem solving, Excel, 
um, Power BI, SQL, Accounting Fundamentals, Financial Analysis, Financial Modeling, and your and you get your certificate, right? So it's 100% virtual. Live classes, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. West African time. Sundays, we have self-paced watch me do videos. I've explained that. We have a one-month growth internship, which I'm going to talk about now after this slide, right? Which is ad added to the civil review, LinkedIn optimization, navigating the job market, interview preparation, weekly mentorship session, right? Three months live class, so total is four months. So the, your program is four months with analytics, three months live class and one month virtual internship. This is the online classroom, right? This is just a snippet of one of the classes. So Steven, Tableau and Python are not in the financial analytics curriculum. I, I, I've shown you what is in the financial analytics curriculum. It's problem solving, Excel, Power BI, SQL, and financial modeling, valuation, and analysis. So you have onboarding videos, how to download Power BI, how to download Excel, navigating your classroom, welcome kit, onboard. You have an onboarding session, problem solving, Excel, what we do with Excel, everything, CV, uh, mentorship, LinkedIn optimization, mentorships, uh, financial model. I just took small snippets for you to see. Now, let's talk about the growth internship. Now, this growth internship is when you are done with your program. You are done with your three months. You are done. You've collected your certificates. You have learned everything you want to learn. You've collected your certificate. We can also say, after you have collected your certificate, don't just go. Don't go. Come back. Because it is not I have learned that I'll get you the job. It is I have done and I can do. So come and do. Come and do. We have a growth internship that is case study based. These are actual case studies that your facilitators have worked on, real life case studies that we have worked on. I'll say, come and work on it. Come and work on Come and do this. Right, come and practice. So when you go when you are on your in, on your CV, you can have things to write. In interviews, you have things to discuss. Not I have learned, but things that you have actually done. I, I had someone who is building, she's building a reservoir of financial models, financial analysis, things that she has done. So when someone says, Oh, send me what you do, she can send. So that's what this growth internship is about. And it's for one month after your live classes. So after your collector certificate. We have like a week or two weeks break, then you start a growth internship. We don't want to choke you. Um, we have a couple of participants who are coming to give their feedback, right? Um, do we have Jonathan, um, Jonathan Dennis and have sat on the call? Jonathan Dennis have sat. If you're on the call, you can just raise up your hand. I will give you um an opportunity to speak. Okay, fantastic. I have have sat. I have half sat. Okay, fantastic. Half sat. Please go ahead. Good evening. Do I have to show my face? Yes, please. If you can, even if it's for a second. <laughs> even if it's for a second. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi. Good Thank you so much. Good evening, good day, wherever <laughs> you are. <laughs> good evening. So I recently finished my own training, yes. And I can tell you that everything that I have been saying so far, you're going to get it and even more. See, you receive me a link to meeting, several sessions that you will enter. It's left for you to pick your pen, pick your writing pad and just as much as you can. And put to put to practice what you can honestly the cv review interview session linkedin optimization everything you're going to get so it's left for you to make use of it honestly so yeah you're going to get everything that you need and as for the training i'm going to be sharing one of my projects that i have worked on actually it was my growth in uh, no sorry not the growth internship my capstone project yes so if you think after the training, you're just going to go, my dear, you're going nowhere. In fact, you still have to do a capstone project and present it before you get your certificate. Yes. And that's the only reason they never have confidence to vouch for you. So be ready to <laughs> come up with your capstone project. So I'm going to be sharing my capstone project to just walk you through it. And prior to now, I feel like I've created models. No. I've had interest in creating models. But it is to feel complex. If you see them using so many Excel formulas, but life is so much easier than 
people make it look ah uh, that's what I've come to learn in financial in analytics. Yes, they made it easier, easy for you to understand, comprehensible. They break it down and they give you time to take your time to get to practice it and so on and understand it. So I created this financial model for my capstone project. It's for it's for a tiger knot manufacturing business. So it's a side hustle that I'm currently working on. And then I decided, to, okay, if I want to upscale, if I want to do it full blown, was the financial viability. And that's why I decided to pick this um, business idea to create a financial model for it. So I wasn't giving assumptions or anything. I did the research myself. <laughs> I wasn't giving any information. I went to source for the information myself. I am my colleague. That's what we all do. So yeah, this is the cover page that you're seeing. Yes, I learned how to design this kind of cover page from them. Yes, from our videos. And then this is the dashboard that gives you an overview of everything. So this is the summary on this dashboard. This is the first time I'm creating dashboard on Excel. Prior to now, my dashboards are PowerPoint. Yes, yeah, small PowerPoint. Everything you want to do, you draw your graph and then you'll be extracting it and taking it to PowerPoint as a bitmap or something. But this is the first time I created a dashboard on Excel. Prior to now, I didn't know how to do it. And this is it. Like at a glance, you can tell. And it is dynamic. I can click on the option here and um sorry, I have to. Oh, there's this drop down here that is making me not touch because I have to. Refresh yeah, it so that it can. You have to refresh your pivot. Yes, I have to refresh, but there's uh, this button that is showing me share my screen, so I can't really access the top oh, here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But let's go into this is the financial statement. Yeah, so this is the financial statement 2024. Let me go back to base case. From next year, 2024, 2024. Right now, if you notice, when I changed it from the worst case, if you can see here, uh, there's a red at the down the cumulative retained earning. But immediately I changed the drop down to the base case, it changed. So this is scenario analysis. You can tell that, okay, if I don't produce up to expectation, what is my financial performance going to be like? So it's dynamic, you can, the assumption it is flexible. So it's not something that is just rigid, no, it's flexible. There is base case, there's worst case, there's best case. So you can flex it as much as you want to. But I didn't just get to the financial statement. There are a lot of things that I have to do to get to this point. If you can see here, there's so many sheets with name. So, and the starting point for the whole of this is the assumption. So when it comes to financial model, you need it, you have to get it right if you assumption. That is the basis for everything. If you miss any step here, it's going to be hard. Your figures might not be really reliable and the like. So the assumption is where you must get it right. So we have general assumptions like how many days in a week will you be operating, months in a year, weeks in a year, months in a year, quarters. These are those basic information. This scenario, this is why it is flexible. This is a scenario that I did. And then generally businesses, they have to be a source of revenue and then expenses. So you need to be detailed when it comes to this process. So I have to think through my revenue assumptions. Oh, the business is going to be making money from selling tiger nut drink, from selling dry tiger nut pouches, and there be no day that is also used in making the tiger nut drink. And this is assumptions that I made. Also, the direct cost that are we incur in order to have these goods that will now later sell to the final consumers. So I had to think it through down to the packaging bottles, the pouch, direct label, everything. And then operating costs. Like I said, this is a side business. And so I can tell how much I will need. I did other research. And you can see my operating costs is not too much because it's not really a big business like that. So depending on the kind of business, it's determine how much you will need to spend to run the business. So these are assumptions for the operating cost for each year, personnel expenses, and then you come down to your equipment. So what, what kind of equipment are you going to be using in the business? Depreciation and then pre-incorporating expenses. Most of the time when you start business, there's some maybe money you incur before it actually you launch it. So you also thank you to cognizance those figure. And then at the end of the day, so most of this figure is not like this is under assumption, but doesn't mean that they are, I arrive at these figures at the beginning. At times it's maybe at the middle of the Workings, you now remember some as that's when you have done the working for it and then you now bring it. So some are linked, 
if you can see, I just show you what in J99, it is linked. And that is why if you look at my financial model, there are some parts that you see are like pink, some parts are white. It's just to tell you that some of these are figures that I imputed myself, while others are outputs, like multiplication, um, sorry, formula. So for instance, now this figure, figure in capital required, it was arrived through a working in working J99. And that is why it's in white. So it's you are creating model, it has to be a way that people can easily understand the figures. You have to format it in a way that you see my work very, very neat. Yes. <laughs> so from the assumptions, you go to workings, where you make use of that assumptions to now do the workings, and then your um assets. You also need to uh, calculate depreciation to find the net book value and the rest, all of these things you come to learn it. Whether you have basic, you are a beginner, intermediate or whatever, it is very easy to understand. And Nene does a good job in explaining it. So she's going to get you grounded. And after that, I also did financial analysis because you, just want to, you don't just want to, okay. Before that, that was how we got the financial statement. So this is the statement of comprehensive income. It can tell you at a glance, you can see the profit after tax. We also made provision for tax. After that, this is a statement of financial position as well. And if you can see my check at the down here, true, it is telling you it's balanced though. We know it's to create balance sheet that doesn't balance. It must balance. So that's the check mark. And then we also did the statement of cash flow. So this is what you hear when you say a three, um, three um, statement financial model. So it's the statement of comprehensive income, financial position, and cash flow. And this is it. So is this financials I now went to do an analysis of it to understand, okay, what's our gross profit margin? What's our net profit margin? What's our um, yield and all of that? So you go down to it. Before you even get to the analysis, you have to extract the necessary figures that you need to use to do your analysis. And, that, and then you create pivot. So it's... From here, we now went down to the dashboard. Prior to now, I really do not know how to construct this. I thought so, like, people speaking French or something to the technique. <laughs> but over time, I opened my mind to the fact that, okay, if anybody can do it, I should be able to do this too. And so I was able to learn it. But we didn't just start from financial model. Then I walked you through the roadmap to get to this part. We started with Excel. You learn um, basic Excel functions and intermediate Excel functions, relevant Excel functions. You learn how to use clean, trim, VLOOKUP, the like. So these are necessary functions that you need to understand. So after that, we proceeded to learn um, Power BI. So very few people still know how to use Power BI. I know, but organizations nowadays, they want people that can use Power BI. So it keeps it gives you an edge. So we learned Power BI like, Core Power BI, you learn how to do data cleaning, data modeling, and the like. It's very interesting, to be honest. Power BI is interesting. So after that, we go here. And the fortunate thing, and the fortunate thing for you guys is if you're joining now, you get to learn SQL. We, we didn't get to learn SQL. So you're getting more value. Okay? More value for the same amount. I am still paying, though. I am still paying. Left to me, they should increase the amount for you guys. <laughs> so you're getting to learn more. <laughs> And that's just part of it. There's still all of the sessions you'll be coming to get, like so many mentoring. And there's one thing I've come to learn about everyone in Canada analytics. They are accessible, easy to approach, and they're always ready and willing to help. So if you're here, you're going to get more than just the training. You're going to build relationship. You're going to have people that you can always reach out to, guide you and the like. And right now, I'm actually going to be starting my great internship tomorrow. I just entered the classroom, and I can tell you it's going to be very intense. I feel like running, but I cannot run. <laughs> because I think it's, I need to use my portfolio. I've been able to showcase this one and the one I created in class. And I feel like it grew already. I've shared it with a few of my friends. I'm like, oh, interesting. How did you do this? I've even had some few discussions. with Some people are like, okay, why did you flex it this way? Why did you flex that way? And I'm enjoying it. So I also intend to be dedicated in my great internship. So it's not just about the training. Also going to have an internship that you can use to have meaningful conversation and feel more confident in your skills. So will I recommend you to join Analytics? Definitely. 
certainly. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm also glad to be to have a role for this program. Yes, I got value for my money and I'm certain you get value for your money. So I hope I can stop here. Yeah? Thank you very much, Hafsa. Thank you so much. In fact, when Hafsa was pre uh, presenting and saying that she went to go and research all the assumptions, I was like, you have to research it because you cannot come and present anyhow anything to me. You will, you will destroy <laughs> your research. <laughs> and so much researching in the growth internship. Okay, we have got this. We are not uh, looking for dollars. Worry. Worry. We, are, we are here. We are doing like this in this growth internship. You want to do a job. You want to end the task. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Hafsa. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Fabian. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Thank you Bye. Um, yeah, Dennis, are you with us? I think I can see Dennis. Dennis, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Please, can you um turn on your video? Let me add you to the spotlight. Okay, let me try and see if I can turn on my video. Okay. Okay. Okay, fantastic. I can, can you see me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good evening, everyone. So I joined earlier on. So I've been, been watching what Nene has done throughout the day. It's been very interesting. So um, I joined Tenalytics. I'm just, I joined, that was about two months ago, thereabout. So I'm about to do my final capstone project and things like that. So um, for me, I'll show you guys a bit of Excel and Power BI things that I've done. So you can see maybe kind of things we've done and you can understand how it is. So I'll share my screen now. Let me start sharing my screen. Um, Where do I share my screen from? Okay, let me see. Have you oh. seen it? There's a green button that says share. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen. Okay. I've seen it. Thank you, fantastic. So can you, can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see your screen. Yes, I can see. So, so this this one is one of the things we did for um, Excel. So we got this data, raw data about um, wanted to do some analysis about employee attrition in the company, and how many people have left the company, how many people are still in the company, and different things like that. So. For the analysis, we actually use pivot tables to do them. So that's why you see I have quite a number of um I have quite a number of sheets here. If you see on these other places why I did the analysis, you understand. But when you're when you start doing it and you might you mustn't necessarily do each of those analyses on in each page before you build your dashboard. So, like this employee distribution, for instance. Um, so I want I need to hide this. Um this thing. So for this employee distribution, for instance, I can always see my, once I click on it, I can see my pivot table analyzer and the design. So I can always choose whatever, whatever I want from this place and just pick up the things I need from the pivot table you get. So I have to do, I, I, did, I did different analysis for different things. If I needed to know the amount of males in the in the company or females in the company, in their average salary, I'm moving from sheets to sheets now. The leave balance for each of the, um, um, what do you call it? Departments within the company, like you have facilities, facility, HR, finance, and different things. So when I'm, I was done with all this, I now have to go and create my dashboard. So this is where my dashboard is. So this is the dashboard. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. This is an Excel dashboard, right? Yeah, this is an Excel dashboard. This is not the Power BI dashboard. This is an Excel dashboard. Do you get? Okay. So, yeah. So on this dashboard, you can see the total number of employees. You can see the average salary they are being paid. You can see the attrition rate. You can see the turnover rates. This thing on the left here, these are my slicers to try and um, filter what I want. If I want only male, female, you can see the leave balance by, by department. And if you notice, I did I did a little bit of formula encoding in the sense that the highest um, department with the leave balance has a more brighter yellow. 
it's you can do that through formula. You understand? Nena didn't teach me this one, but I just did it on my own because I understood. I, I got the concept of how functions and formula work. So I had to figure it out on my own. Do you get? That's the thing. Once you get the base understanding. So the thing about Excel is about getting the logic. It's not about, okay, doing something. If you understand the logic, there are so many ways you can do a particular thing in Excel. You understand? So once you understand the logic very well, it's easier for you to always do things and create whatever you want easily. Do you get once you get the logic, you can always do that. So this was one of the dashboard I did in Excel. I know is there are different colors and everything. Me, I'm a color person. I like designing. So I, I enjoy designing. I don't, so it's always going to come out like this for me. You understand? So this is just one of the dashboards. So I'll go to Power BI and show you another um dashboard I created in Power BI. So let me open the Power BI. So can you see my, my Power BI? Yes, yes. Okay, so this was a dashboard for a, um, the company's VTech job application tracking. So the idea was we wanted to track people who were sending in um, applications into the company needed and they had openings. So people were sending in ap applications. They, so they wanted to know how is it like, how many candidates, how many candidates, uh, candidates have been shortlisted and shortlisted um, by department, by candidate, number of application status, whether the ones that have been rejected and everything. So this is basically the dashboard. And it was, there were three different dashboards. They were linked by this thing, by these, um, well, I'll call them bookmarks. You understand? So any of the, if I hold the control key and click on them, it will switch to another dashboard, which is, this one is a rejection dashboard, as you can, as you can see. This is the rejection, rejection, um, rejection dashboard. Sorry, one thing, let me go back to the table view. So this, so this table view, you, you can see each of the tables on the right hand side, you can see the different tables, calendar and um, dimension table, candidates, dimension. These DAX measures, you might not see anything here because it's just like you're building on top of your, your data. So the DAX, the DAX measures was where I had all the calculations for my um, my dashboard, you understand? So this is um, the HR um, application table. So all these tables are linked and you can see them from this place here, which is the model view. So the model view is where you see, where you see, where you data your, do your data modeling to link the tables using the primary keys and the foreign keys, you can see, so like what this means now is one to many, meaning one candidate can have a more than one can have more than one application and things like that. So so this candidate name now can appear more than one here and everything. So this one too, one to many. So what the idea of using um multiple tables like this is you are um you are trying to normalize your um your data to make it easier to, for people to understand in the sense that you you want you want your analysis to run quicker because everything can be in one single table but once you do it like this you you bring out different tables from that main single table it's easier for you to to analyze your data and it can do things quicker rather than just leaving everything in one table because before we started this analysis i had only hr application table but i had to bring out too many things. I brought out the uh, rejection table. I did the vacancy table, candidates dimension table, calendar dimension table. So it was that way I did it before I started doing my running my DAX measures. Yeah, and, just to add, just to confirm, did you not do any of this before ten analytics? No, I didn't really know how to do. I just knew how to use Excel very well, but probably I was just. I've heard about it, so I was not really, really particularly about, okay, how it works and everything. But the good thing about Power BI is, if you understand it, it makes your work easier. So building this dashboard for me now, it was easier for me to build this dashboard in Power BI than this one I built in Excel. I don't know if you understand. It took me so much resizing yeah. and everything mm -hmm. for me to build this thing in Excel. But in Power BI, it was easier. So what I did was, for my background, I did, since I, I like colors, I did my background in, in what do you call it, PowerPoint. You can also do it on Power BI. It depends on which one you're convenient 
with I did my background in PowerPoint. I did all these things, all these shapes and all everything. They are all they were all done in PowerPoint. So it's just my my charts, and the, these are the things that were just done in Power BI. So this thing now is everything on the background is just a picture, basically. Everything you have on the background is just a picture. You understand? So that's how I did my own. But people do theirs differently. Some people have to bring do everything yeah, their design. You can actually Power BI. Power BI. <laughs> you understand? So for me, it's convenient for me to do my design in PowerPoint yeah. mm -hmm. and do my charts in and every other thing, filters, bookmarks in Power BI. Some people prefer doing theirs everything in Power BI. So whichever one is convenient for you, so you, go, you can go ahead and do it. You, you, you get where I'm coming from. So from what I can say is um, I've really enjoyed my time with Tenalytics. Yeah, I put in the work actually. So it's not like, because sometimes they'll give you, as, as you're finishing the class, the class, you have an assignment and you have other things you're doing within, within, within the week and you'll be getting messages from Priscilla saying, hope you have done your assignments. you just be thinking, ah, I have work, I have this, this pattern to submit assignments. So there are so many things that are always going to be coming up in your mind. And if, if it's for following up, they'll be following up. They will they must make sure you do that kind of, do the assignments. If it's for that, because else, if you don't do it, when you get to class, you might be at the, you might be coming from the back while the lecturer is saying, okay, do like this. You'll be wondering, eh, what is it? What is it trying to tell me to do? You understand? But if you have done your watch me video, watch me do it videos, and you have done your assignment, you're on top of your game. So it's easy, it's easy for you to attack the lecturer. Like, this particular thing, explain this particular one. I don't understand it and everything. But if you have not watched your watch me do it videos, it becomes difficult. You cannot really catch up. You understand? Your mind, you'll be like, don't worry, I'll catch up on this time. I can tell you for free, it's be very difficult for you to catch up. But if you have done it, you can always note out your questions when it's time for you to, to when it's time for the classes over the weekend, I think on Saturdays from 11 to like 2.30 or thereabout. You can always ask your questions that, oh, I was trying to do this thing, but I didn't understand it and everything. So it's easier for them to, for the person that is lecturing you to always answer, okay, do it this way or do it that way and things like that. You understand? So basically, basically I'll encourage you to join the analytics do your financial analytics program or you do your data analytics. They have quite a number of programs, you understand? But I preferred doing the financial analytics program because with financial analytics program, you can become a data analyst or you can become a financial analyst. So it's like two in one, basically. So you can always do any one that you find interesting. I also have my, um, what do you call it? My financial modeling, this thing, but I just have little things. I've not done the dashboard, but I've done basically everything yeah, but since someone else has showed you the financial modeling aspect, I will not bother showing you that one this evening, actually. Mm -hmm. So that is just my own contribution to everything this evening. This Thank evening. you very much, Dennis. Thank you very Thank much, you very guys. Much. Yeah, your, your capstone presentation is coming up. So I'm, yeah, yeah, in I'm about two weeks. You, I, yeah, so I think yeah. we have a shopping session this week, so we can discuss, we can discuss that. Okay, yeah, so that's fine. Thank you very that's much, fine. Dennis. Thank you that's very fine. much, Dennis. Yeah, so, You're um, welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, so before um, Prince takes over, right, let me just quickly share my screen and just talk about the pricing quickly, then Prince will take over for his own um, feedback. So our next cohort starts first Saturday of October, which is October 7th. That's the next cohort. And how much is our program for the training and value added service, every single thing? The cost of the program is actually 400 pounds, 320,000 naira. However, we always have an early bird discount, which reduces it from 320,000 naira to 270,000 naira, which you can pay in two installments. You can pay this in two installments, right? You can pay 180,000 naira now and 90,000 at the end of October. However, because this is the beginning of the month, right? You can make, you can, uh, we allow um, you to pay the 180,000 naira twice. Um, in two installments. So you can pay a hundred thousand naira now and secure a spot. Then the end of the month, you that's end of September, you top up eighty thousand naira to get to your welcome kit. So pay a hundred thousand naira now and pay eighty thousand, but you must pay the hundred and eighty thousand before by the end of September. Right? You must pay the hundred and eighty thousand by the end of September in order for you to get your welcome kit. So hundred thousand naira now. So they can you can secure your early bird discount and you don't have to pay 320,000, you pay a total of 270,000 naira. Right. 
So this is our early bird discount. That's the price in pounds, the price in Naira, price in USD, and price in Canadian dollars. Right? We have account details. Right? We have Paystack. We have PayPal links. Now this is the um this is the link that you get every single thing you need. Right? When you make payments, it's important for you to register after pay making payments. So I'm going to click on this just quickly to show you. Prince, please, you are, you are taking over now. So this is our enrollment details. This is the access to all brochures, right? This is where you upload your receipts. So you are making, so when you make 100,000, put it here, you pay the 80,000, put it here. When you pay the 90,000, it is here. This is the final balance, right? So this is Naira payments. You can pay, pay stock here. So not, not just Naira payments. So those of us across Africa, here in Ghana, you can make payment through pay stock. Then non Naira, that's out of Africa payment, you can pay pounds and Canadian dollars, and you can make direct transfer to either UK account or Nigerian account details, right? That direct transfer. And when you make your payments, you have to fill the form. This is this helps us to know that this helps us to know that you have made payments, right? So you fill the form, your email, your account details, every single your your email, the email that you want. Um, allocated to your um, this email is the email that you want. So please provide the email that you want access to the Google Classroom. So this is the email that you be you you your welcome kit, your Google Classroom link. That's the classroom system will be sent to, and every so you fill this, upload your receipt and everything. So we're going to come back to this, and I'll take questions now. But um, after this, so please please share your feedback. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Can you turn your video? Let me add you to the spotlight. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay, no problem. Hello, can you see me? Uh, yes, yes, I can. Hi. Thank you very Hello. much. Hi. Okay, yeah, so, so um, my name is Prince. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So, okay, I'm a new financial analysis incoming professional, and the thing is, um, Far BI is a very great tool. At first, I knew nothing about it. So, as they took me through each week, it was like something new information, and it's each each day, each Wednesday, Tuesday, Friday, there can be arrangements where you can also get to ask your questions. And through that, you can also gain understanding from your friends and everybody. So um, I also created, a, um, I'll be able to create some dashboards. I wanted to show you, but I think I've already seen a lot. Okay. And so, so I'll be really quick with this. What, co what cohort are you? Are you July or August? I mean... In July. July. Okay. okay, I started in the um, beginning of August. You started beginning of August. Yeah. August I started in the beginning of so August. So you, you started last month, right? Yeah. So please, even if it's the same okay. thing, you just show what you have done in a yeah. month. Yeah. Right? So please show. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll share my screen right now. Okay, so I hope you guys can see my screen. So this is a financial model which um, I created. Um, it was actually one of the, the class projects. And we can see from here that there are um, sales. This is 10 analysis sales um, performance. And also um, we, create, we were able to create, through our teachings, we were able to create um, total sales over here and um, total profits we are also um, able to make our sales per category which is over here you can see we have furniture is the highest um, among all the others which is technology and office and um, supplies and it teaches us that um, among the, the the whole year the sales most of the so from this analysis you can see that okay um, we can also identify which type of customers who purchase the furniture the most. 
And from over here, we can see that um, these are tech and top 10 products which are being um, the company also introduces to its customers. And we can see that um, our fellows PB, um, PBS, PB5s, they have the highest amount. So it means that um, our company is doing well with our fellows PBS. And also we can, with this, we can also know that um, our bush is very, very down. We can, um, we, we can tell management that, okay, with this, we, we can um, create a form of package where people can also patronize um, other of the products. Uh, the products. So um, we also have our sales per, um, by region. We can see from here that East and the East has almost 26 k. We are generating a lot of profits from the East, um, whilst the South um, is very low. Um, okay. And also down here, we can see our, uh, our sales trend. This is from the um, beginning of the year, from January to December. You can see that our line is indicating that on November and December, we are at our highest peak. And in, also in September here, um, we also were, did very good. But in February, there was something wrong over there. And it can indicate that, okay, when we try to open it and indicate what was happening there, we see that um, our, all our focus was that um, most of the customers were buying fellows PBS, which is indicate, indicated over here. And also it came, uh, most of the sales came from the East. And also um, furniture over here, I think nobody was making a lot of purchases over here, but furniture had the most. Screen is a little bit more. But I hope you guys can manage. There's a lot of things I'm still learning. And this is just what I know for now. Thank you, Thank guys, you for much. your interest. Thank you very much. So you've done problem solving, you've done Excel, you've done Power BI, and you just showed us yes, one yes. of the few things. I think you've just had one class in Power BI, right? Yeah, I think this was a second class. Yes. So yesterday was a second class on Power BI because I know that for you to have started in August, you should just be in the middle of Power BI. So fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. How has it Thank been to too. have the experience joining? You're from you're in Ghana, right? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah so how yeah. has it been joining the mentorship session, joining the the CV, all the, all the value-added services? How has it been? Okay, it's been great so far. I like the... A lot of the presentations, sometimes I even miss some of them, but I try to download it so that I can watch it. And like it has been inspiring for me. Like me, I haven't been with like this kind of pressure before, but when I'm inside, I feel like, yeah, I'm learning for something and I'm learning to gain new tools, new things, which will help the world. Because yeah, I'm, I have a background in accounting and financial analysis seems like the way forward for me. So thank you, everybody. Thank you much. very much. Thank you very much, Prince. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Uh, okay, fantastic. So, um, th yes, um, I'll be taking questions now. If you have questions, please raise your hand while I quickly finish my slides. And when I finish, I will take all your questions. So like I said, you need to, you need to click this to enroll, right? You need to click this to enroll. Um, yeah, so we have a couple of videos here, right? We have a couple of videos. Sorry, give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, yeah. So before we get to the videos, I, I need, yeah. So, yeah, so we have, this is just some of our participants that have gotten jobs. I saw someone asked about it. So we have Iladigwe Solomon, and we'll get to his video testimonial. Iladigwe so, um, Solomon, he studied engineering, and he came to financial analytics, analytics, financial analytics. He was interested in finance. He did the program, and after that, he got a job as a financialist at Kigo. We have so many people, but these are just a few that we have put on my on the slides, right? Just, yeah, so we got a job as a financial analyst in Kigo's Oil and Gas Limited. We have Victor who completed this program and got a job as a financial analyst in Nikon Finance Company. We have Bumi Obidigo who, uh, she, I like her story, right? 
So while undergoing her program, she got a job as a market data analyst. So I think by the end of her Excel program, she got a job as a data analyst. And when she finished her program, she started doing freelance jobs on, on Upwork. She was doing freelance jobs. No, like I said, we have Upwork um, freelance optimization sessions. So she started doing freelance sessions, just in a cool door, you know. Um, she did budget, she did financial forecast, she did different things on Upwork. She does rather. And then we have a follow-up who worked who did who completed a financial analytics program and got a job as a financial analyst at Coolbox. Cool book, cool box, or is it cool books? Right. So that's that. We also have some videos here. And actually, if they are, we have short videos, and I, I would just like us to hear from them quickly. So this is Omodele Core Creek. Can you please let me know if you can hear my if you can hear. Hello everyone. My name is Modele Cole Creek. Can you I'm hear her? Account. Can you hear her? Hello, can you hear her? Okay, fantastic. An advertising practitioner. So doubting and thinking um, if you should be part of Tenalytic, <laughs> you know, you are on a long way. So Tenalytic has made Be marketable. Oh, okay. Give me a second. Let me reshare my screen. I think I know what happened. Yeah, you should hear her now. Is it is a very short video, it's less than a minute. So that's why I'm taking it. Hello everyone. My name is Modele Cole Creek. I'm a chartered accountant and an advertising practitioner. If you're still doubting and thinking um if you should be part of Tenalytics, <laughs> you know, you are on a long so Tenalytics has made me achieve so many things. I actually this um, week I was given an assignment, a case study, and I was able to use the learnings from Tenalytics to achieve my case study assignment. They they tutor us on what to do, what to place on your LinkedIn. Apart from uh, LinkedIn, there are all the platforms that you can. Put yourself out there and be marketable. I'm so glad and I have no regrets to have joined Tenalytics. And also, it is quite affordable. Kudos to everyone at Tenalytics. Thank you. Thank you. We have another one from Solomon. Let me just quickly take that. If there, we have short, short videos. You can actually go on our YouTube. Three, two, Hello. one. My name is Elodie Solomon. I've grown from say infancy to being um, a full time professional under the guide of Tenalytics. I just say that the, the facilitators did a thorough job in equipping us with the skill needed out there, and the community is such a great one to belong to. My journey with Tenalytics has been amazing. I've moved from literally novice to uh, I, would, I would say advanced level at this point i know i still have a lot to learn but it's been nothing short of amazing all the way to this point i really recommend the program any day anytime so this is so you can actually go on our youtube and see participant testimonials right where they talk about their participation and everything so the links are here you're going to get this these slides right so um, I'm, your, I'm the lead facilitator for financial analytics. However, I am not the only person that takes financial analytics. We have Jenas, who is an experienced professional. He was in the LinkedIn Live on Friday, right? We also have Teniola. Um, so these are the main financial analytics um, facilitators. You also have other facilitators that will take you um, um, Excel, Power BI, SQL. The financial model evaluation analysis will be taken by us. However, even if I don't take you your live class, you would use my Watch Me Do videos throughout your pro, your financial analytics, the core financial analytics part, and you will have drop-in sessions directly with me. I might not teach you, but I would be in, infused throughout your program. Half sat, I was not the person that taught. I think tenure that taught half sat. However, 
I was, I do all dropping sessions for financial analytics core. You have a different facilitator and dropping sessions for Excel, Power BI, and others. But financial analytics core, I would be, um, I lead the program, right? So just, you can look at this at the spare time, some of the financial model dashboards that we have built and all Excel, Power BI, and the likes, right? So yeah, I'm taking questions now. I'm taking questions now, right? So remember the program is, 270,000, we have um, instrumental payments. This is early in the month. So you can pay 100,000 right now to secure your, your discounted slot. Then pay the balance of 80,000 by the end of September. Um, so you can get a welcome kit and all. Then you pay the balance of 90,000 at the end of October. Ugo Chuku, your hand is raised. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Ugo Chuku, your hand is raised. Please go ahead and go ahead to unmute yourself. Okay. Good evening. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, and then, your, I've been following the analytics for some time now, and your master classes have been, wow, breathtaking. Like I said, bomb. <laughs> you are really. You really know when to start doing your magic, and it's so impressive. Um, <clears throat> my major question is: I I have done project management, though my background is in, in engineering, civil engineering. Um, I'm trying to do the the project management I did. It was not so very very because it was just my first shot, and uh, I didn't really get the whole thing. I was not well grounded. So I'm trying to know because I've asked several. They said you guys are not uh, taking project management classes right now. Um, which other uh, class may I join or lie and roll in to blend or to give me a push with my project management? Yeah. So um, that, that will be the biggest analysis program. Okay. Right, so that will be business analysis program. So I think there should be a master class. Give me a second. Let me check for business analysis. All right. So we don't force people to take particular program in analytics because every program is very is, is intensive. Let me just put it like that. So we try to ensure or guide you throughout your program. So give me a second. Sorry, give me a second. I'm trying to get the exact dates for your program. I think someone, uh, one of the team members shared it earlier. Uh, yeah, so this is on Friday, this coming Friday. Friday is 15th of September, right? You would be, the, that's when we have the, we'll have the business analysis masterclass, right? So this number here, send a message to this number here, one of these two numbers, these are 10 analytics numbers. And tell them you're interested in business analysis um, masterclass, and you'll, you'll be added to the business analysis um, masterclass group. So you can get information on that since you're interested in project management stuff. Is that fine, Ugochuku? Ugochuku, is that good? Okay, Dan Katz, your hand is raised. Please go ahead. All right, good evening. Thank you, Nene. It's been wonderful having you. Even though you have answered my question partly, <laughs> but I wanted to find out. Uh, I would have started on the August, but because of the uh, mode of payment, which I just got to realize that I can do like double payment before the end of September before the class starts. Yeah. And I was looking at can I do make sure that I even if I break it, I must can I complete the one eighty before the class starts? Yes, you can complete one eighty before the class starts. Fortunately, the, the class starts October seventh. But the thing is, we don't want I, I don't advise you waiting to the end till October seventh. I think payment ends October fourth, right? Because we need to confirm payment. We'll give you welcome kits because remember it's until you made the up to the one eighty that you receive your welcome kit, right? Um, and you need to. I want you to also attend the onboarding, right? So pay the hundred thousand naira now so that at least you can secure your 
discounted slot, right? Then try to see how, how fast you can make the payments before the class starts, right? So just message Priscilla. She would inform the payments team that you, you'll be noted that it might go beyond October and um, beyond September, early October. So pay, pay the 100,000 and inform Priscilla. She will talk to the payments team. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, someone's asking about how do I present my report? So first of all, there are different ways for you to present your reports, right? First of all, this alone is already a presentation. You are going to, you are, you are in a, you are in a meeting, you, you share your Power BI, you share your screen. It's just like you're going to, you're sharing your, you're sharing your, 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 power, your PowerPoint slide. You are going to share it. And this is actually interactive. You're not just looking at one slide. You're not taking a picture of it and putting it in your power, PowerPoint slide. You're actually interacting, going through the data, saying, okay, I'm, I'm interested in only, only ring lights. What's going on with ring lights? And you can see that you're getting more information. There's also Power BI online, where you send the link to your, this Power BI slide to other people. Those are things that you're going to learn in the main class. Like I said, I can't teach you the, the language of Power BI in master class. We're going to get learn all of these things in the main class, right? So I hope that answers your question about reporting. Steven, you said I should take you through the payment link again. Um, give me a second. Give me a second. Andrew, I'm going to take your question very soon. Just give me a second. So this is, where am I, where is my, yeah. So this, you type your name, you type your name, your email, right? Right, to put your email here. This is the email that you're going to get. It must be a Gmail. That, but that's how you're going to, because we use Google Classroom. That you must, that's how you get access to your, um, that's how you get access to your, what's it called? The Google Classroom, right? Your gender. I, I'm just putting anything there, don't mind me. Mode of payment. Is it initial payment? Is it full payment? Is it balance payment? So initial payment. Next. You have to read the analytics terms. Okay, sorry. Give me a second. So this is the pricing again, just to show you. So like I said, it says 320,000, but we have discount. We have early discount, early bird discount that reduces to 270,000. The balance, that's Naira, 300 pounds and USD and Canadian dollars. This is the first payment. This first payment must be made before October 7th. Right, this payment was made for October 7. However, for you to get this early bird discount, you have to deposit something now to secure your slots. You have to deposit something now to secure your slot. So that is that is why I said deposit 100,000 euro now so you can secure your early bird discount and you can have that. Then, you, just like what I just discussed with um, um Dan Kat right now, you heard that. So now let's go through this together. Let's continue this in terms and conditions. Next, when did you make payments? Let's just say this one mode of payment. Let me say Nigerian transfer receipts. Sorry, give me a second because I have to click my, my personal folder to do this. Okay, then okay, then this. If then, what program do you register for financial analytics? Next. What cohort do you intend? Do you, do you intend to start October cohort or November cohort? October cohort, your WhatsApp number with country code, location, I'm in the UK. Um, how do you find out about the class? Let me just say, it's analytics LinkedIn next. And you submit, you have to click submit. When you click submit, you, you receive a confirmation email that you have sent it. Then within two to three working days, your payment will be confirmed and you'll be informed here yeah, basically about that. Are we good? Are we good? Andrew, please go ahead. Okay, good evening, Mike. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I can hear you, please. It's clear? Okay. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm actually following this class from the beginning. I saw uh, I saw the, I think the link on uh, Twitter. So I joined and took me to WhatsApp to the community. So I've actually been trying to get uh, hands on uh, Power BI and Tableau. 
but you have presented the Power BI, and from what I have seen so far, it can also deliver based on what I intend learning or doing with this uh, analytics uh, uh, career. Let me put it that way. Actually, I'm learning data analytics, but financial analytics is actually the area I want to concentrate on. So the uh, my question there is the section, the actually the online section, how many times per week? Are we just looking at just Saturday only or maybe any of the days within the week and Saturdays then other days will be just for assignment? Okay. Because from the content you actually presented now, which is the roadmap, I think it's a lot that one has to actually take in. That's what I want to find out. Every other information I've actually able to. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, our program is very intensive, right? That's why, we, like I said, we don't force you to take a particular course. We want you to make your choice. You can attend master classes and be sure that this is what you want to do because it's very intensive, right? Your live classes are on Saturdays, right? Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. West African time. However, we have drop-in sessions. Now, these are times that apart from um your, your live class on Saturday, while you're watching the Watch Me Do It videos, on Sunday or in the course of the week, you have some questions that bothering that you don't you don't necessarily want to wait till Saturday, right? Even though you're you're you are going to add it to a WhatsApp group where you have the your facilitators inside that WhatsApp group. We also have live dropping sessions in the course of the week. It's not it might not necessarily be every week. Maybe people have questions and they request. We have dropping sessions. We also have mentorship sessions, the CV sessions, the mentorship sessions, LinkedIn optimization sessions. They are spread across. It's not as if you have something on Monday, you have something on Tuesday, you have something on Wednesday. Have, no. So most maybe twice a week, twice maybe on Thursday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday, you know, once in a while. It's not like you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, it's not like that. So maybe Thursday or Friday. We don't necessarily have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's more either Thursday or Friday. Thursday is, const is constant. Now I have mentorship session. Then maybe CV, okay. you have CV review this Friday. Next week, Friday, you can have LinkedIn. Or upper Friday, you can have, you know, something like that. That's how we have it. Is that fine, Andrew? Yeah, it's okay. And also, this, uh, this your slides. Can, can you send it to us? Yeah, so, I um, am yeah, do we have, are we on the WhatsApp group? Priscilla, please send the I'm link. on the WhatsApp group. I think the broadcast link, I have it. Fantastic. So, I don't know if it's also attached to this video that you'll be sending to us. Yeah, so the video time. will be sent. Yeah, the video will be sent tomorrow morning because it takes time for okay. Google for Zoom to convert it. To convert, you understand? Yeah. It takes time for it can be exported. That's the honest truth. It takes time. Okay. So if you're on the WhatsApp group to this evening, you're going to get this slide this evening. However, the recording, all of those things will be sent to your email tomorrow morning. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very yeah, much. So you are going to get payment slides and you are going to get this brochure this night. But the payments, the link, the recording, the Excel, the Excel, the Power, Power BI, everything else will be sent to you, right? Tomorrow morning in the email, in an email, because we need it to convert. This is already what 10 11 p.m. We said it's a three-hour masterclass, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., right? So at 11 p.m., everybody we are done. We are, we'll soon be done. Right, so tomorrow morning you're going to get it. Is that fine? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank yeah, Kim, I, I believe that's fine with you also. Yeah, any other question? Any other question? Um, We have, like I said, we have like 11 minutes now. We have, thank you very much. We have 11 minutes now. Any other question about the program, or about the curriculum, about payments, about any other thing? So, like I said, we have, Um, I think we should have a capstone presentation for by some of the participants in two weeks. So you can you when you make payment for this, you can still we'll still invite you. We should still invite you depending on things. Your email is Yahoo. Stephen, you, you don't have a Gmail at all. Right? You don't have a Gmail at all. So the thing is just like your Gmail, right? It's most people have Gmail. You don't have a Gmail at all. Steven. Oh, uh -huh. so you can that whatever Gmail you have, just fix it there. So let me go back to the link. Let me show you. So you can put your Yahoo mail here. 
you can put your Yahoo mail here, right? But here, it should be a Gmail because it is a Google Classroom. Most almost everybody has a Gmail for one thing or the other. Cause yeah, so you can put both Yahoo and Gmail. Do you understand, Stephen? Is that fine, Stephen? Okay, fantastic. Any other question? Question? You can type it in the chat room. You can raise up your hand. We have ten more minutes before the end of today's session. We're actually already done. Any other question? I believe that um, our questions are answered. So please ensure you are in the WhatsApp group or you have filled the attendance form, right? The WhatsApp, if you're in WhatsApp group, you get the slides this evening. You fill the attendance form, you'll get the recording every single thing tomorrow morning. iPhone, please go ahead. I think you'll be the last. Hi, thank you so much, Nene, for Yeah, give me a second. Steve, just give me a second, iPhone. Steven will send it tomorrow morning yeah, because Zoom takes time to convert. It's already late. So tomorrow morning, everything will be converted and everything will to be sent in an email. We do that as my um, the analytics team will send it out to you. Okay, iPhone, please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much for this session, Nene. You actually convinced me to take this class because I was almost going to take, I, I almost made payment for some other thing over the weekend. Okay, my question is this. In this finance analytics course now, do we get to do projects? And do you teach, would you guide us on how to create a portfolio? Yes. More like to, so yeah. that at least we can help you with job search and all of that. Let me let me let me show you a classroom, one of the classrooms. Right. Okay. This is one of the classrooms. So we have different classrooms based on so when you join the cohorts. You get your own classroom. You join your own classroom. So these are the these are the things. This is February cohort O two. So you can see the their classroom is still active. This is this are some last year. Can you see the classrooms are active? So it's forever, right? So we have we have it. So this is building your portfolio. Can you see that? iPhone. Can you see that? Hello. You're not talking to me. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. So building your portfolio, we will have talk stuff on um like literally you have everything and it's recorded. The session is recorded, so you can come back to it and watch it at your pace, at your time, and everything. So you have okay. all of that. So this is 20. Okay. This is uh the this is I think have sat class. Oh, okay. Um, Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, so you, you see that. Dropping sessions, book and interview. Oh, okay. Check professionals. You can see that. You know. Oh, okay. Yes. Sounds good. We mean what we say, and we say what we mean. That's what <laughs> yeah, because the truth of the matter is that if we're not, if we, if we were boboing you, right, we won't have the results we have today. That's the honest truth. Yeah. And we are very intentional about it. That's that's the only that's the reward for the analytics. The fact that people are getting jobs, people are, people are advancing their careers. That's the only reward. At the end of the way, you get promotion, where you get money, is the money enter your account now. It's not into my account. Am I lying? <laughs> All right. Thank you now. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Kazim, go ahead, please. I think you'll be the last person I will close. Kazim, go ahead. Kazim, iPhone. Kazim, iPhone, can you hear me? Hello, Hello Charles, are you Hello. doing something? Yes, hi, Charles. Yes. Which of the classes is starting October? Is it the advanced or the financial analytics? Financial analytics. All, okay. all our cohorts start on the same day. Like every, we, we have- So a, which one do you advise for somebody doing, running a, a data analytics already? If you're running running data analytics already, what 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 do you want exactly? Tell me, tell me what um, you want. If for the Power BI, so so the thing is the stronger Excel the and then let me show you. So what do you advise? Somebody takes uh, financial analytics first what before you, you go to advance. Is what you want, right? So problem solving Microsoft Excel Power BI SQL. This is exactly the same thing in data in, in data analytics. Okay. The only thing is data analytics has Tableau and you have financial modeling. Okay. That is the difference. 
So are you interested in getting Tableau or you're interested in financial modeling? Which which is the giveaway? It's the same price for all the programs. No, I, I'm okay with this one. I'm already doing a uh, data uh, Tableau uh, elsewhere. So. So this is so this. no, what I want to know the difference way? between the financial and advanced financial analytics and machine learning. What's so we don't have we 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 do we've scrapped not scrapped but we've um removed the advanced financial analytics. Yeah, okay, so advanced okay. financial okay. analytics is basically data science but financial inclined. Okay, so you guys have taken the advanced yeah. financial analytics. So it's, it's, it's but so it's, what we've done is like so exactly like we have this. Right, for that financial analytics is data analytics, but finance. Data, advanced financial was data science with finance. So this is, we put, put the finance here and we have just data science. You understand? Okay. Then also the account number so that I can make the payment as yeah, soon so, as possible. Um, Priscilla has posted the link on the chat, see? So what, this link has the account details. It has everything. Which link? I'm pasting it now. Main stack link. Can you see enroll? Which is the link I okay. just showed here? This is the link here. So okay. you, it has everything. This is the link. Main stack enroll. This is the link. You have the bank details here and everything. Then when you finish, when you make payments, you come here and you upload your receipts here. You understand? Mm, okay. Okay. No problem. Okay, I upload my receipts here. Yes. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So um when you upload your receipt, you'll fill this form exactly like as we have filled it in class today. Okay, no problem. Okay, no problem. Thank you Thank very you. much, everyone. Kazim, your hand is still raised. Are you ask, asking a question? What's going on? We are done for today. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Please, um, the slides will be sent this evening to the WhatsApp group chat. This evening, right now, in the next 10 minutes, it will be sent, right? Um, the recording and every other thing will be sent tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, everyone. Do have a lovely evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.